shack at. The bottles getting nifty up the crack and we stacking chips. All of it's what I want. Plus money winners, that's what I'm on. You can say I'm gone. I prefer elevated pub sports radio. Time to get educated. We get produced. Leave the juice. Letting loose with so much abuse that the bookies want to call a truce. They get slaughtered. Can't forget Jeff and low baggers in the chat. That's a lethal weapon. We be pubbing. Uh. Pubbing. What up, cappers, gamblers, punters, hustlers, low baggers? Happy Friday, January 19th to all of you. Thank you for watching Betting with the Bag right here on Pub Sports Radio. It was a disappointing day yesterday. You know, Marner, two chances at the empty net was just a huge swing for me. He misses the first chance with about 50 seconds left. Open net, but, you know, from his own blue line, it's excusable. So I'm like, okay, it's a push. It's a push. Then he gets the puck with five seconds left at the top of the circle with no goalie in that. You know, it's like a $575 swing if he puts it in there. Uh, but he does not. But he does not. Uh, it was frustrating. It was frustrating. So I lost a little under a unit in NHL. Uh, frustrating uh elon you know i got plus 16 and a half a plus 110 a halftime live to cover the bet but there's no excuse for your my loan college basketball move not cashing so that that was uh, uh that was disappointing and then i you know when it when push came to shove i was afraid to go up against everybody with the thunder uh you know i i didn't I thought the market was screaming that the Thunder were the right play, but I just left that money on the table. So disappointing. I got to follow through when I when I I just wasn't sure if I had the conviction from an X's and O's standpoint. But right from the tip off, you knew the Thunder were going to take care of business to stop this stupid Jazz winning streak. God damn! So disappointing. But I'm ready to fire. I'm ready to fire. And our two guests, Bobano and LJ, were spectacular last week. Uh, Bobano uh, combined with college basketball in NHL. Now, he cashed in both. Was 12-8 and eight plus 5.24 units. Cashed another draw. We'll go over all of that. LJ was 7-3 and three plus 3.86 units. LJ went 7-0 and oh in sides and totals. He went 0-3 oh in, in player props. So combined, uh, they were monsters. 19 and 11 uh, plus 9.1 units last Friday. Uh, it's a, you know, historically, and this has changed for me because I became consciously aware of it, but it, my first few years of doing this full time, my Fridays were bad and I understood what was happening. I was just tired from, from the week and I've, ch I've changed that. That's changed. Fridays have become very profitable. I understood by keeping track of all my records, where my, mis you know, where the, what was wrong and I think I fixed it, and I want that cash today. Uh, today was in and out day for me, so it was th it, that swing with the Marner goal was uh, it was pretty upsetting. Uh, not, nothing else to say about it. I just couldn't believe. I mean, to, to, a, to a tiny extent, he's my first round pick in the hockey pool. I mean, that's one percent of it. I mean, it at least help me there. The other ninety nine was not cashing when that was. I truly thought that was the best bet on the board. And I hope some of you guys got in live when they were down 2-0 early. A Viper MB in the house. He's on Grant over 19 and a half points. Beal over 18 and a half points. Porzingis over 18 and a half points. Pelican money line and Florida minus one. I'm with you on Florida minus one. I'm with you on Florida minus one. But I also just bet the Islanders on the puck line against the Blackhawks. That was my final bet. I've got I've got four bets on three of the four games in the NHL. There's one game I'm missing, but and that's the Hurricanes Red Wings game I haven't moved on but moved on the rest of them. Uh Justin McKelvey stacks play today Brooklyn plus six and a half. I look very closely at Brooklyn. There's orange juice octopus in the house. Let's get the stacks play of the day here. Nice casher for stacks last night. Let's get the stacks play of the day here. I like this NBA card. I'm uh expecting to succeed today. I'm expecting. To, I like this Friday makeup too, uh, where where I know that we're going to cap each and every college basketball game on the board, and I, I like that feeling. Only 15 games on the board, Div One games, and then uh, LJ. It's just it's a nice mix. It's a nice mix. We need to get that cash. Uh, is what we need. 
so Justin is on Brooklyn. Brooklyn. You know, I think that you're on the right track, Justin, and I'm going to wait till we talk it out here. But, it, you know, I was on the Lakers against the Mavericks. They step up. They seem to play to the level of their competition. Uh, you know, when they need to win, when they need to step up, when it's important, they do that. Uh, here, doesn't it feel like the Lakers are going to win this basketball game but not necessarily cover the, the number against the Brooklyn team that comes off their fourth straight loss? Uh, lost nine of their last ten. Uh, I, I like where you're at. I I hope that everything correlates so that I can join you on Stacks Play of the Day uh, because I, I like it. I like it. Uh, Jay Smooth in the house. There's my guy, Tori Coker. Jay Smooth. You want to run with Jay Smooth? You come to San Antonio. Bo Jackson ready to get to work. There's LJ from H-Town, 7-0 and on sides and totals last Friday. Series business, Joseph Thompson. Sweepage for Bo Jackson. I love it. Board sweepage. God, how, how is there not a word? How is that not a word in the dictionary? Sweepage. That's what he did there. Nice job, Bo. I love it, man. Get that fucking cash. Senators, I left money on the table. Clearly not moving on the Senators. And then Mel. Shout out to Mel. She was right on. With that Bruins avalanche game, that fourth goal by the Bruins was just a thing of beauty, man. God, it reminded me of playing. I mean, just uh, DeBrusque in the just the top of the circle, curling, that uh, kind of a pass shot down to Pasta, who just deflects it in. Fucking gorgeous. I mean, that's just – they're a good hockey team. But uh, I've got a lot to say about this NHL card. I can't wait till we get to it. I can't wait till we get to it. Von Polo snowed in and ready to get that cash. I love it. Cody Norton, a Stonehill money line. Nice job. We have Maurice times two. Maurice times two. How well has Jimmy been? Anybody know? <laughs> I'm sure he's talking about. I'm sure he's talking about my record, not how hung up am I or something like that. Uh, Matty Ice ready to get back to work with Taint. Rocco Rogers coming off a huge day. Went 3-0 on the Ottawa game alone. Panthers minus 1 and minus 120 for him to get started. Subhuman Gaucho. We got Bo Jackson. Says, Can't wait for UFC 297. Bills versus Chiefs this weekend. Going to be at both live. Bo, good God, you're going to be at that game live. Can you, oh, God, you got to send us some pics or something because we're going to be doing the live stream there. Slatsy coming off 7-3 and three plus 4.49 units in NHL yesterday. Hawks, Islanders under 6. You have to bet it each time. You have to bet it every time. You have to blindly bet Blackhawks games unders right now every single game until it loses. I'm not usually someone who, I mean, when I get in really early on a streak, then I do, but I'm not usually someone who jump, who needs these things, but... Every single Blackhawk, they've scored four goals in the last five games, right? We talked about the dead cat bounce with Bedard's first game of injury. They score four. <sighs> Come on. It's just, now, the team can beat them 7-1. And I did add the Islanders puck line. And you know something very strange? A lot of people, when I started doing this publicly, were like, you can't, uh, on sixes, you can't take a puck line and an under. Uh, the the chances of that guy. And my ROI on sixes when I have both the under and the puck line. Now there has to be a spot where you're confident in in the look. Uh, it was through, it was excellent. It was always excellent. It, uh, so I don't listen to any of that stuff uh, at all. Uh, the Dapper Capper, Joey Marinacci on the house. There is coin. Jose Bouquet upgraded to membership to PSR Gold. Jose Bouquet and Red Girl now a member. I love it. Thank you, guys. We have $100 up for grabs, $100. So, uh, And Preston is coming, too. Preston says if he wins, then we'll carry it over. Uh, if I win, we'll carry it over. Uh, Jeff, if Jeff wins, carry it over. So the best-case scenario really is for one of us three to win because then it carries over to the next race. So today, $100 up for grabs here uh, for – the PSR gold members, and we'll be doing $50 races every Wednesday and Friday. Uh, Marie, Maury, Maury times two. No, I, I put, uh, I don't get enough out of action for me. Uh, I, you know, there's certain things that I need with my record keeping. So I just put them out every day on Twitter, uh, Maury, every day on Twitter, uh, and every day here on the show, uh, Maury, every single pick that's put on the show is tracked by every guest, by every, so everything. If uh, That's the one thing. Um, that's the only thing we promise you here on the show is honesty and transparency. That's it. That's the only thing we promise you. That's the only thing that you're guaranteed uh, for. Uh, Dan Kelly says, I have a suggestion for the confidence pool. Don't close the ability to make picks until five or ten minutes before game time. There are no lines involved, so there's no reason to close it until then. That's an interesting look, Dan. We just like talking about everybody's action. Um, so, uh, if more people want, I mean, I just think it's fun 
to talk about it, to see every, what everybody's on. It's just part of the fun. So we're doing it for fun. If more people don't care about seeing everybody's action, you know, to talk about, because it gets really exciting. You know, it's not quite there yet, but when there's three games left, it's going to be extremely exciting. And I just, but, but if more people want that for sure, uh, there's Clint Starr, the Die Hard MMA podcast. He's got his action here. I'm going to copy and paste it. Thank you for always sharing your action with us, Clint. Huge, huge MMA night for us here at Pub Sports Radio tomorrow night. And Mikey Money will be hosting the Packers 49ers live stream that will be going alongside it. Michael Johnson says, uh, where is the tennis guy with all the cash? Sammy Calmer is who you speak of. Sammy Calmer. Hopefully he's resting. This guy's it's an Aussie open. These games are on at three or five in the morning, you know. Uh, great to see all of you guys. So uh Clint ready to go. Major Tom ready to eat. AOD in the house. Aquinamus, Christopher Carter. Uh so great to see all you guys. So let me miss sorry, did I miss um uh, Ian Shaber has now upgraded, upgraded to PSR gold. I love it. Thank you, Ian. Um, Dan Kelly said meant before the first game of the weekend. You know, we can talk, we can talk about that if people want that. Um, you know, we can talk about that. Uh, it's up to you guys. I just, we just kind of like to talk it all out. It just, you know, be able to, I, it's just the fun that I've, I've always, cause I've done this type of pool and was always getting in by Friday at midnight. So then all day Saturday, you can kind of look over everybody's action, but whatever you guys want, whatever you guys want, we will, we will do. So it's great to see all of you guys, all of you guys. And Oh, Maddie ice with some news. Where is it? So here, just got a text from my mom. We just got back from a post op and all clear and cancer free. Yes. yes. It says, thank you. Low bag family for all the pr prayers. Much love. Oh, Maddie ice. That's such wonderful news. Such, such wonderful news. What a way to start the show! Um, that's just absolutely great news, and she's a she's a fighter and uh, all clear. Get her home, get her with the fam. I love it. I love everything about it. I love it. That's wonderful, wonderful news. Uh, Stimmy OG Joey Harb in the house. Great to see all you guys. Leroy Flood, Jared T G, uh, Equinimus ready to go. Nasty Nate. Great to see all of you guys. Well, let's get right to work. Shall we? Let's get right to work with that great news. Let that carry us through uh, here. It is time to roll. Oh, uh, uh, hit Maury's question. Oh, what comes with a gold subscription? Uh, what comes with a gold subscription? Every Wednesday and Friday, we do a $50 a Wheel of Glory uh, roll so fifty dollars goes out to a gold member every Wednesday and Friday, and you get a discount on merch. That's for starters. We're going to be adding things to the gold subscription. This is the first week of the gold subscription, so that's at first. First, you're going to get fifty dollars uh, rolls every Wednesday and Friday, and if the three of us, Jeff, Preston, or I win it, we'll just carry it over like we did uh, yesterday, and then you get the subs uh, a discount on our store. So there'll be more. Uh, there'll be more. There's our guy, Guillermo Zertucci. I love seeing the pictures of Eli uh, in the Navy. Man, I can see why you're so proud. What a great job you've done, G. So shout out to you. And Slatsy and everybody just giving the love to uh, our guy, Maddie Ice. What wonderful news. And Maddie Ice sharing the taint play today. It's Quinnipiac. Minus four and a half. Okay, we've got so we have four NHL games. We have 15 college basketball games, so we need to move quickly here. Uh, we have LJ joining us. We would like that to be in four, uh, an hour and 44 minutes max. So, and I love this NHL card. I love this four game NHL card. So let's get right to work. Let's bring on your next guest, your star of Friday. So on Friday in NHL with just two games, he went two and two, plus 2.06 units. He in NHL now is got an average line of plus 170. We're watching it very closely because of his draws. So right now with his NHL draws, he's four and 12. He's hitting at 25%. Hitting at 25% with his draws has given him an ROI of plus 16.88%. He's up 2.7 units. He gave draws on both games last Friday, and he went one and one plus 2.4 units. And last Friday, he went 2-2 two and two in NHL plus 2.06 units. 
And he followed that up with a 10 and 6 plus 3.18 units in college basketball. So let's keep it going just like this. It was a very, very impressive performance. And we need more. Please welcome from Canada's black and yellow, black and yellow, Canada's steel town, Hamilton, Ontario. Please welcome Mr. Ian Cameron to the show. Bobano, how are you? Yeah, it's great. Uh, that, that, seeing those draws cash are one of my favorite. Uh, makes me as happy as winning any bet I could win. So uh, then we've uh, got to know that we uh, had one of them last week was good. So uh, there's, there's not a great draw slate tonight, but uh, there is one I like. I'm excited about this slate. I, I feel like I, I've i attacked it as, as heavy as I do. Uh, but, you know, I don't for it. Like, it's just uh, I would be okay if I had one bet on a four-game slate. I don't need to force it, but I have um, – Four bets on three games. So let's get after it. Uh, quickly, uh, Perky says, I, I need to hit one NCAA money line, one NBA money line to win 10K in the pool. So he said he had no idea until this morning. Studying the cards since 3 a.m. Right now, Quinnipiac money line, Lakers money line, any other creative ideas appreciated. So we'll keep you in mind, my man. Uh, Slatsy says, Sammy Reinhardt scored eight uh, games. Oh, he's gone eight games in a row with a goal. Flurry confirmed. So we've got lots to talk about here on this NHL card, and we'll let Slatsy lead us in with the Sammy Reinhart uh, talk. One of my favorite players in the NHL. His dad was, you know, one of my favorite players in the NHL. And that trade we got him over from the Calgary Flames was the beginning of the change for the Canucks in LA. And maybe you could say drafting Trevor Linden second overall after Brian Leach was was the change. But uh, <clears throat> it started changing with Reinhardt and Linden, and we and then we started building from there. And his son Sammy and his other son Griffin played for my club team uh, where I played all growing up. Uh, and it's too bad that Griffin uh, didn't make it in the NHL. Had a great. AHL career, but I digress. Let's get to work. 7 p.m. Eastern, the Minnesota Wild, 18, 20, and 5, 7, 11, and 2 on the road at the Florida Panthers, 27, 13, and 4, 13, 6, and 2 at home, Amaranth Bank Arena in Sunrise, Florida. Mark Andre Fleury, 8, 9, and 3, 2.97 goals against average, 8, 97, save percentage, one shot. Going up against Sergey Bobrovsky, 21, 10, and 2, 2.46 goals against average, 9, 11, save percentage, two shutouts. Minnesota power play, 18.5%, penalty killing at 71.3%. Florida power play at 22.8% penalty killing 84.4 percent it was a mortal combat situation with news for the minnesota wild and their beating heart was ripped out of their chest when they heard that jared spurgeon is done for the season i didn't even know that was that wasn't confirmed yet that was confirmed yesterday so i didn't even know that when i said on this show that i think jared spurgeon is more important than minnesota wild than kirill kaprizov and maybe that's so arguable, so arguable. And even saying it out loud now, I mean, I'm not sure, but but that's how much I respect Jared Spurgeon, and he's done for this season. And so I wanted to fade them on multiple levels. You guys know I've been fading the Wild nonstop. I'm going to keep fading them as much as possible. But I didn't want them to lose too badly to the Lightning. I was on the Lightning minus one at plus 118 last night. And when they made it 3-2, I bet the Panthers minus one hoping that it wouldn't end 7-3. to three. We saw the last time they were in. Now, they've been embarrassed 6-0 a couple times, but the last time they were embarrassed 6-0, they came back and won 5-0. That's their only win over the last little while. So I would have preferred I would have preferred that this, uh, that they didn't get beaten so bad. But the reason why I can say it's fine is because Florida comes in off their third straight loss, 3-2 in overtime at home versus Detroit on Wednesday. Now, do we want Alexander Barkov in the lineup? Desperately. I don't know if he's going to be there. Uh, he, he does, It's not a serious injury, but he's been banged up for a little while. He missed the loss versus Detroit. Their last two losses have come in overtime. And to top it all off, this is the final game of a five-game homestand. So they started it by beating the Kings to win their ninth straight. And now they've lost three straight. This is a perfect motivating spot for Paul Maurice to go into the room. And you guys have to win this game. We have to get a win on this last game of the homestand. You know, all hands on deck. Let's go. So with all of that combined, I did confidently move on the Panthers minus one at minus 126. And I would have preferred the Wild had a closer situation uh, in the game against the Lightning. But, you know, we got paid for it. And. That's really all that matters is us getting paid. So uh, here we go. So we have the total sitting here at six uh, juice to the over. Uh, 
it opened up at plus 103. It's now at minus 103 to the under. So there has been six cents of movement to the under. And then from a money line perspective here, uh, sorry, it's taking a second. I have to get a couple things up here. But from a money line perspective, we are dealing with the Florida Panthers at minus 195. They opened up at minus 184. So it's 11 cent move in their direction. I got the Panthers minus one at minus 126. Take it away for us, Bobano. Game number one, Minnesota Wild, Florida Panthers. Yeah, it's an interesting spot here because you do have Minnesota off a bad uh, game last night against uh, Tampa Bay, 7-3. to three. Uh, Gustafson was just not very good, uh, and he has obviously been missing for a little bit. Uh, and then, of course, they haven't played good hockey just overall. One and five, their last six. Florida, who had this, I think, road trip of a lifetime. You know, I, I, I can't think of a period of games on a road trip where a team in the NHL has played better than Florida did uh, on that road trip. I mean, they went into Vegas and Colorado, the last two cup champs, and they d dummied them. They, 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 they basically did a tap dance all over both of those teams. And so to see them come home and really not play that great, it's kind of, uh, kind of surprising, but I guess, you know, some regression was going to come into play at some point. You know, even the L.A. game that they won in overtime, a little fortuitous there. And then, of course, they've lost the last three games on this homestand, including, you know, Anaheim, you know, below average team. Detroit actually isn't that bad, but still, they had a lead in that game and they couldn't hold it. They lose 3-2. That was the Alex Lyon revenge game, if you will. Uh, you could tell that guy wanted to go back to Florida and beat the Panthers, uh, Alex Lyon, and that's exactly what he did uh, in that game. That's why I was on Lyon over saves in that. Wednesday night game, Detroit, Florida, which was a nice uh, prop to hit. Um, this game, I think it's a good spot for Florida. It is. I mean, it's back to back for Minnesota. I know they're going to be embarrassed, but they're not the better of these two teams. They're not playing well. They're without their best defenseman by far for the rest of the season. And Jared Spurgeon, that is an impact absence. Uh, and when him and Brodine were both out, it was really trouble. At least now they've got a Spur uh, you know, Kaprizov, a lot of their forwards back, but just still not a playing very good hockey. It's time for Florida to show that desperation, that sense of urgency that we kind of saw from Toronto last night uh, against Calgary. You don't want to end this homestand losing four in a row and having to go hit the road after that uh, once again, even though they played well on the road. So I'm going to go with Florida, but why lay minus 190 when you can take over three and a half with Florida with their team total minus 106? That's the bet for me. Uh, Florida team total over three and a half minus 106. I am going to add Sam Reinhart plus 122 at Patano uh, to score um, a goal in this game. Um, I have to. I mean, he's scored an eight straight. But I'm also going to take the draw in this game uh, because I think Minnesota will put up an effort. I think it's got. I think this game has four to three Florida written all over it. That kind of final score. I mean, you lose like that, you're, you are going to show up and play better. Flurry's in net. He's actually been a little bit better lately. The one concern I guess I would have with Flurry and why I like the team total for Florida is because he got the record with that win against the Islanders, you know, that's taking care of the, you know, he passed Wah uh, in the all time wins list, you know, that's done now. Uh, so does he really, is he going to have that same performance or is there maybe a little bit of a hangover from that spot? We'll see tonight, but I, I still think this game could be close because I think Minnesota is going to push back hard following that uh, debacle in Tampa last night. I just don't think they're going to be good enough to keep Florida off the board. So uh, three bets here. Reinhardt goal plus 122. Florida team total over three and a half minus 106. And this is a draw. I, I have to take this draw because I've been on these last couple Florida draws. They've gone to OT three of the last four games on this homestand. One close game after another. So plus 380 with the draw. You got it. Uh, you got it. Now, the last time they lost 6-0, it was horrifically embarrassing. It was another Gustafson start. Gustafson's allowed 13 goals since last two starts. Uh, they came back and beat the Islanders 5-0 uh, you know, at home. <clears throat> but I've seen them show no heart in other uh, spots. So I'm not certain that they're going to show heart here. But again, as I said off the top, I would have prefer preferred Tampa not winning 7-3. But we watched them lose to Dallas 4-0 in front of their home fans, then go to Dallas and lose 7-2. Uh, that was also, you know, 10 days ago. So, but then they did show hard after that Arizona loss. So yeah, we'll see. Interesting spot. I like your action. So I'm on the Panthers minus one and minus 126. Bobano's on the Panthers team total over three and a half minus 106. Sammy Reinhardt goal plus 122. And sorry, what was the draw again? 380. Plus 380 on the draw. We roll on. And Slatsy rolled with you on that. 
a Panthers team total as well. 7 p.m. Eastern next up for us, Detroit Red Wings, 23-16 and 5, 12-9-1 on the road. The Carolina Hurricanes, 24-14 and 5, 12-4 four and four at home. We're in PNC Arena, Rally, North Carolina. Alex Lyon, 10-4 and 1, 2.54 goals against average, 9-23 save percentage. One shot. You know, it's been great to see Alex Lyon and Joey Decord, uh, two journeyman goalies, uh, step up now, and it's uh, richly deserved. I love the effort that they put in throughout their entire career, and great to see them succeeding. Anti Ranta on the other side. We're waiting here for Kochekov with the concussion, and then Freddie, we know that he's got this illness that's going to keep him out for an extended period. So Ranta has to step up, having an opportunity to step up, but yeah, at this point, it's such a goalie carousel for Carolina. Who know? I mean, I'm sure they're going to be in the trade market. I mean, we're going to see what the hell they're going to do about all of this. Detroit power play, 21.6% penalty killing at 80.8%. Carolina power play, 27.2% penalty killing at 83.7%. A comfort and cop have given them accountability. As much as I'll rally about neither being a top six forward, and them sort of being the same centerman on the third line, even though Cop is probably more defensively responsible. Uh, they're, they've added just a crucial element that was missing from this Red Wing squad. And then another thing I should say is I should apologize for my take on Patrick Kane a little bit. Now, I know he's out of the lineup, which is something that I expected. But still, seven goals, nine assists, 16 points in 19 games. I did not think he was capable of that coming off the hip injury. So great job by Kane. Uh, something that I didn't really think he was capable of. Detroit comes in off their third straight win, 3-2 in overtime at Florida on Wednesday. Ville, Husso, Jake Wallman, and then Kane and Matt Luff, Fords, and Wallman, the defenseman, they're all out right now. Hurricanes have been off since their 5-2 loss at home versus the Kings on Monday. It looked like they were you know, rounding in the form, and then the Kings, who were playing so bad, uh, beat them 5-2. Now, I watched the entire Kings-Predators game last night, and the Predators were the better hockey team throughout the whole game and on every the brutal almost spot for LA absolutely brutal. It was their eighth game in 14 days coming off a very long road trip. Absolutely. My colleague on the ice guys, Alex, it was his biggest bet of the year last night, Nashville. Oh, so a great, very happy was, for him. It was a great spot for Alex uh, and great job for him, but I've been watching the Kings often and they're not the best team on the ice for a, a long period of time. Now it wasn't the case in the hurricanes game, but uh, there's got to be concerns going on in Los Angeles oh, yeah. right now. Uh, but here for the Canes, Neches has not been very good. He's out with an upper body injury. So let's go. This is the only game on the board that I don't have action on. So let's get handed over to Bobano. What we have here is the Hurricanes at minus 202. Uh, they opened up at minus 189. They're now minus 202. So they're rested. There's an expectation of a bounce back. Maybe that all happens. Uh, this total has moved towards the over it opened over six now plus 103 it's now over six now minus 105 uh take it away for us here bobano we have red wings hurricanes yeah you've got carolina as i mentioned off that loss against uh, la uh, on uh or earlier this week and it was a situation kind of surprising uh when you look at it that um you know they, they played that poorly uh you got to give riddick credit he didn't play that bad uh, in Real that well. uh, game uh, and when you look at uh, Carolina, they'll be looking to bounce back following that game uh, to L.A. And, of course, here's the thing for me with this game. It's critical. And I believe – I don't know if we're going to get Kochekov back just yet because this concussion situation is, you know, very delicate and uh, it's uh, a, a moving time frame as far as when he's going to be back. Uh, most websites have um, Ranta um, as the uh, projected goalie here for – uh, Carolina going into this game. So we'll have to wait and see how that uh, plays out. But uh, uh, it, I think uh, it's going to be Ronta tonight. We'll see. Uh, the last I checked yesterday, he was doing one-on-one -on -one work with the Carolina goalie coach, uh, and he was on the ice. But there's no timetable for his return. Um, so I don't think we're seeing him tonight. I think we're probably seeing Ronta uh, once again in net for the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. Or they decide to put that young Latvian goalie that they called up from the uh, Chicago Wolves and Yaniv Peretz uh, for the uh, Hurricanes. He's the backup right now to uh, Ronta. But either way, you're not probably going to see Kochekov. And that has me looking over the total uh, in this game. Uh, that's the uh, look for me. Detroit's been an over machine lately uh, in this game. And I committed uh, to uh, Carolina games being more high scoring once I saw that Ronta was going to be in net, you know, game in and game out without Kochekov. Let's be honest about anti Ronta. He's not had a good season. <laughs> for the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. He's been poor uh, in that. I don't trust him to make the key saves. And even though D Carolina 
statistically does not give up a ton of high danger chances. They're they're always among the league leaders and fewest high danger chances allowed. It doesn't take that much to get those couple of chances they are giving up. They're, the puck's going in because the goaltending has been so subpar. So that's the issue Carolina is falling into right now that, yeah, they're not giving up a ton of great chances, but the great chances they are giving up the pucks going in too much because the goaltending has just not been good enough. So uh, Ronta, it looks like is going to be in net tonight for this game. Uh, We saw him give up five in the loss to LA Uh, Detroit. We know is scoring goals in bunches right now. I mean, you go back to the last seven games for Detroit, they've scored three plus six of the seven games. So it's been a very impressive run offensively for this team. They're 6-1 and one in their last seven games, playing really well. I actually think Detroit could be live, but the big win against Florida, the team that won the East last year, Carolina two days off, three days off rather, and the loss, you would expect Carolina to fire back strong. So I feel better about the total rather than taking a shot on Detroit here uh, in an underdog spot. So uh, we'll see. Uh, how uh, this one goes, but I like goals here uh, in this one. And as far as Lyon goes, Lyon was exceptional against Florida. He played great, and you know he wanted to win that game. There's no doubt. Uh, But I feel there could be a little letdown for him tonight. He's uh, already been named the starter for tonight. And his numbers against Carolina, historically, remember, he's uh, seen Carolina a a decent amount because of his time with Florida. Uh, You know, he ended up with a 4.22. Actually, he's got a 3.08 goals against average, 898 save percentage lifetime against Carolina and when he faced Carolina last year with the Panthers he gave up four goals on uh 26 shots so not great from Alex Lyons so uh I could see him maybe struggling a bit more tonight so uh put it all together and we're going to look over six and a half here in this one at uh, minus 105 and or sorry minus 104 at Bet Rivers you got it over six and a half uh was that minus 105 sorry minus 104 Minus 104 for Bobano. That is the lone game that I don't have action on. Spreadsheet play of the day is in. And another uncomfortable situation where I am heads up with the great Ron Crawford. Let's roll into that game right now. New Jersey Devils 22-17-3, and 13-7-1 on the road at the Columbus Blue Jackets, 14-21-9, 9-12-4 at home nationwide arena in Columbus. Ohio. You guys have been watching me bet on the Jackets often. I had them against the Canucks. It was a terrible situation, a travel situation with the Canucks getting snowed in in Buffalo and had the the bus up to Toronto and fly out. But Columbus outplayed Vancouver. There were a couple defensive letdowns and that was my problem. That's why I sort of got off them for a little bit when Wierenski got hurt. But I was as soon, you know, we were on them when they stopped their nine-game losing streak. And I am telling you guys, this Columbus Blue Jackets team deserves futures next year. They are going to be so good. And I, I watch this team. I watch the way Sillinger is playing. Now, Boone Jenner is expected to come back from the fractured jaw tonight. Uh, I think that's going to help very much. I, I don't know if that helps necessarily in the first game, but it's going to help very much longer. But Cole Sillinger, watching him win face-off, seeing the complete player he's turning into. Chinnikov is an absolute sniper. We know what Fantilli is doing. Now you have Ronkov and Marchenko on the third line with Kent Johnson. This is becoming a very good hockey team. These Russians are so underrated. They're so talented. But not only are they talented, they're tough. They're tough and strong and big. They don't get pushed around. They're not uh, so it's they're not like Sni- the snipers that we remember from the past. Not not that Ru- we Russians are soft or anything like that, but these guys are big and tough and this team is so good. They're way undervalued in the marketplace. And I don't know what the hell we're going to get from Merzlikens. If you watched his interview after the game against Canucks, he was basically saying that, that this was the most important game of his life. The, the way he's being treated, and because you know, he's asked for a trade, and then they trade his backup. And he was so intense. He's so emotional. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But in that shootout, he was spectacular. You just saw this confidence in him where he was like, I knew I was going to get paid in the shootout, which is a rarity because it's such a flip of a coin. But I was like, oh, no one's scoring on Merzlikens right now. So I don't know where he goes. His 3.22 goals against average, 9 6 save percentage, I, I truly, I don't know if this skyrockets up or goes down, but I think Columbus is a really good hockey team compared to where the market has evaluated them. And I think that I'm going to be on futures with them next year. 
And then we look over at the New Jersey Devils, and I don't think they're a very good hockey team right now. And it's not it's not that Dougie Hamilton is the big issue. Really, the issue is is Jack Hughes. Uh, Hughes just is the straw that stirs the drink. Uh, to Foley, Hishier, and Brat are not playing like a number one line. And then Meyer, McLeod, and Mercer. I love Mercer, but Meyer's not been good on this team. It's just there's just not the firepower that we remember. And Nemich and Marino of the top pair. You know, Luke Hughes has a huge upside, but you take Brendan Smith and Siegenthaler off this team. You take Nosek off the wing uh, with Hughes off the center. I, I just I just don't I have no concern fading them, and I did so as soon as I could. Uh, so I got the jackets a plus 140. When I looked this morning, it was just plus 135. Uh, right now, that's where it's at. at that's plus 135. So that's where I'm at. Uh, we've seen Dawes be more trusted right now than Vanacek. That makes sense to me. The Devils coming off their fourth loss in five games, 3-2 a home versus Montreal on Wednesday. I think that's who the Devils are uh, right now. And, and we're all waiting with bated breath to see what the hell they do with all this money that they've got from the LTIR with Dougie Hamilton off. And of course the problem is going to have to go into a goaltender unless Dawes can step up, which is possible. So with all that said and done, uh, Wierenski and Blankenberg still out as is Patrick Line, but who cares? As soon as Wierenski comes black back, my God, is this bet on time, but I think it's bet on time now. Take it away for us here. Bobano devils, blue jackets. Okay. So I have the New Jersey devils this season without Jack Hughes at three and seven. Three and seven in 10 games without Jack Hughes this season. You pair that with the time that both Hughes and Nico Hishier were both out, and the record gets even worse for New Jersey. So that's a problem. That's a problem. We know teams are going to lose top players. We know teams are going to lose, you know, players that are very important to the success of the hockey team. But we know there are teams out there that can withstand it and show they can put good hockey on the board without that player and still find ways to win games. New Jersey's not doing that without Jack Hughes. Three and seven is not great at all in 10 games for this squad without Jack Hughes. They're one and four in this current five-game stretch of games without Hughes. Lost. Now, they did play Vancouver, Tampa, pretty good teams, Boston. But what's the excuse for Montreal the other night? 3-2 in that game, blowing a lead. Uh, you know What's the excuse for that? Uh, if you're the uh, New Jersey Devils against the Habs. So you're not playing well uh, and certainly not looking to lay a price with them. The question is, do I trust Columbus enough? Um, Columbus did beat Vancouver. Uh, it was a solid win for them, 4-3 in a shootout. You beat the Canucks. You got to get some kind of credit for it. It's a terrible spot for Vancouver, though, the very end of a very long, grueling road trip. But give the Jackets at least some credit. Played a good game. You're right about Merzlikens in the shootout. He was awesome. And he's playing with a little piss and vinegar right now. You can see he's agitated. He's angry. He's upset that he's kind of been looked over here by this Jackets team. I, I don't know if he is going to get traded or whether that was just, you know, spur of the moment anger, but uh, I think they are exploring at least the potential of trading him, Columbus. Uh, we'll see if anything comes of it before the uh, trade deadline. But, you know, maybe this guy is just, you know, he realizes, look, if I'm going to get the starts I'm demanding and hoping for, I need to play well. And maybe he's going to dig down even deeper now and play well. Uh, and certainly now, if he's going to get traded, he should be motivated to play well anyway because you want to enhance your trade value right now uh, across the league. So uh, it'll be fascinating to see how he plays, but uh, there's no question that was one of Elvis Merzlikens' better efforts in the win against Vancouver. Can he duplicate that, though? Why have we had issues with Merzlikens in the past? Well, because of inconsistency. So the old Merzlikens, after a game like that, would give up six or five goals tonight against New Jersey. So that's the thing he's got to stop. He's got to stop the inconsistency, and he's got to put two good games in a row together, and that's something that's been a problem for him uh, all season long. I think that's what Yarmo Kekalainen sees in, you know, maybe considering trading him out, giving him a fresh – he needs a fresh start anyway. It's absolutely insensitive and nonsensical and totally fucking tone deaf that they blare those fucking cannons every time Columbus scores a goal when that guy had that tragedy with his best friend – Matisse Kiv Lennox, his fellow Latvian goalie who died in a fireworks accident where there's big bangs going on and they blow that cannon off every single time Columbus scores. It's tone deaf with Merzlikens in the net, PTSD syndrome. He's talked about it. 
you know, the, the here in the cannon in the arena, it kind of brings back those memories of that. Like, how stupid can you be? How insensitive can you be? Shut the cannon off when he's in there. I know it's a jacket staple, but my gosh, let's have some human sensitivity here for crying out loud. It's ridiculous, but um, we'll see how, we go, how it goes tonight uh, for this uh, game against the Devils. I definitely lean with you on the jackets. I do. Um, now you look at the head-to-head. -head, New Jersey's beaten them the last two times, including a 6-3 win in Columbus. I don't love seeing that. Uh, they also uh, blew a game that they were leading in New Jersey. I remember that game. And they let Luke Hughes do this end-to-end -end rush and tie the game and then a brutal defensive breakdown uh, in overtime. And it ended up being a 4-3 comeback win for the Devils. So they've had some – that was a brutal loss for Columbus in that one. Uh, we'll see how this game goes. I'm definitely on the over. You can you can, you can put me on the, this over 6.5 here in this game. We've seen the last two meetings go over. So – uh, over six and a half for me, minus 125 uh, at bet 365 in this game. Um, and I'm debating about the side, but uh, I'm, le I'm leaning. I'm I'm with you. I'm kind of leaning to Columbus here. I, I just cannot lay minus uh, 160 on the road or close to it with a New Jersey team without Jack Hughes. That's three and seven this season without him. Over six and a half. And what was the juice? Minus 125. We have a little capper here. I was going to say, yeah. Hi. She's got a professional day today, and she hasn't said hi to us in a while, right? You want to say hi? Hi, Captain. How are you? <laughs> okay. Okay. We got to get to work. Are you going to wish us winners? You gonna she get probably some winners? gets more PA days than I ever did. Good luck. Okay. Thanks. There we go. All right. Okay, she was very patient. She wanted she's been wanting to say hi for a long time. She was very patient, uh, sitting there waiting uh, very patiently. Uh, over six and a half for Bobano at minus one twenty five. I'm on the jackets at plus one forty. Uh, let's move on to the next spot on the board, and it is a double up spot for me. Double up spot here, eight thirty p.m. Eastern. I, you know, I can't hammer it enough. I can't hammer it enough here. Um, uh, thank you for the. Uh, Thank you for the, the kind words, you guys. It means a ton uh, to me. She's an absolute sweetheart, and I'm just uh, so in love with her. Uh, and uh, she still wants to. Okay. <laughs> she had her opportunity. Let's roll. Here, New York Islanders, 19, 15, and 10, 8, 10, and 4 on the road. Chicago Blackhawks, 13, 29, and 2, 9, 11, 1 at home, United Center in Chicago, Illinois. I, I honestly, I don't. There's a couple things here. A couple things. One, I, I do not see how the Blackhawks score goals. I don't. A uh, Kurashev, Radish, and Pitlick. That's their first line. Dickinson, Anderson, and Blackwell. They are being coached very well right now. They are playing such a They're playing so hard hockey. defensively it's and trying well. to just keep everything to 1 1, 1 0, 2 1, just to give themselves a shot right now. Because that's the only way they can compete. You know, um, you ha I just I can't hit this enough. Like, it doesn't matter if you. Like it or not, it doesn't matter if it's if, if what trends are going on. Around. You just have to keep betting these unders, yeah, nonstop. And if one goes over, that's fine. Just keep betting them and keep betting them and betting them. And it also shows how good Bedard is offensively and how bad he is defensively. Because if you were watching some of the mis you know the mistakes, it's always Bedard you know making them. And he's going to be a great player. Don't get me wrong, but. Uh, Slatsy says, would you look at the Hawks team total under two and a half minus 134? And, and my answer, again, is, is no, because when when I when I see them 2-2 two, two going into overtime at some point here, you know, I just, uh, and, and, and that's, and so it's not that I, I don't like it. It's just that I would much prefer an under six. Now, are we going to be, you know, like would Sabres beat them 3-0? Was I concerned that that was going to go over? I wasn't. But is there going to be a 7-1 loss or a 6-1 loss or a 5-1 loss that costs us? Possibly, you know, possibly. But so I knew I was going to be on the under six, and I got that as soon as I could at minus one fifteen. Before that was available uh, at Pinnacle, I just bet it at three sixty five. It's now minus one twenty five there. But then sitting with this and looking at this lineup, it, it's not just that. It's that the Islanders have lost all three games to begin this road trip. They've been outscored twelve to three. This is another well coached hockey team. Now, if you know Ryan Pollock and Bartuzo are out, Casey. Casey Zekas and Peter Engfall are out. Engfall could return tonight. But if you believe that the Islanders are heartless ass clowns and they're going to get just sweep, the, I'm telling this is, and, and maybe, and I, you could say I'm exaggerating, but their season's on the line tonight. 
they can't get swept on this four game trip and go back and still think they have a shot at the playoffs. Lamorello would now need to start selling pieces. And maybe that's a little drastic or extreme, but they have to win this hockey game. And what do you look for when you play against the worst team in the league is a team that's got a ton of motivation. And the Islanders do. Could that possibly bring this over to six? It's possible. But uh, I felt that I had to take the Islanders minus one and a half. And sitting here now, looking at this card, and we did this yesterday with the Leafs, that the Islanders puck line is the best bet on the card in my uh, estimation. Now, are the Islanders going to show no heart whatsoever and lose to Chicago? How, how can they? I just don't see how they possibly could. They come down from Winnipeg. They have the rest advantage. We, they're going up against the Chicago team that has a 12.8% power play with Bedard on the ice. I mean, they just have to, the, this has to be the best bet on the board. It has to be that simple. So I'm on both the under six and minus 115 and the Islanders minus one half plus 109. Take it away for us here, Bobano. I don't know if the Islanders are going to win this game by margin. The win the game, yes, but win it by margin. Chicago at home. Look at what Chicago's done at home lately uh, at the United Center. Even with all the injuries up front, they have been they've been in every single game. You know, the one game they lost by a multi-goal margin at home lately was Dallas, three to one, and I think it was an empty net goal that put it away. It, it was a shootout with San Jose. It was a one-goal loss to Edmonton. Uh, they beat Calgary undermanned as they were. Uh, at home as well. I mean, at home, this team, like on the road, things have gotten away from them a little bit. Like last night against Buffalo, that was a brutal spot, though. They're sitting in Buffalo an extra day. Uh, and uh, I, I just had a feeling it was going to be one of those just dead as a doornail nights for Chicago. Now, Islanders do have the rest advantage. They haven't played since Tuesday. Third loss in a row on this road trip. But their form's not good. They're not scoring right now. Chicago's put up tough efforts at home. And don't look now, the guy that's going to be in net tonight for Chicago, he's actually played well lately, Morozik. You know, Morozik's actually going through a nice little run lately in net. So I think it's just, for me, the two bets that I like in this game. I'm with, I'm actually making, and I I can't believe, this is usually the kiss of death. This is usually, I will never in my life on this show give out another under for a hockey game if this doesn't hit tonight. But I have to bet it because of what we're seeing out of Chicago. I am Definitely. also on the under here uh, in this game. Uh, Islanders, Blackhawks, under six, minus 112 uh, at Pinnacle uh, right now. I have to be. I mean, Chicago is just an under machine right now. Uh, six, uh, five straight unders, 2-1, two, 2-1, one, two, one, three, one, two, one, three, nothing. Like These games aren't even close to going over the total. They're playing this tight Katie bar the door hockey because they have to play that way to give themselves any kind of chance. Uh, in these games so uh, under six i was shocked actually the total was six shocked uh that we were able to get six with this so under six minus 112 but this is my second draw uh, on the board the new york thailanders we've talked about them uh, a lot uh, this season with uh, among the league leaders as far as overtime is concerned i think we've got a good chance to see that here tonight uh, with the islanders and blackhawks saw the blackhawks uh, play a lot of one goal games at home lately uh, a shootout with the uh, Sharks the other night. Head-to-head, -head, we've seen three of the last uh, seven head-to-head -head meetings between the Islanders and Blackhawks go to overtime or a shootout. Uh, and the Islanders, to me, you know, they're not playing at the form where I think it's going to be a comfortable win, even with the schedule in their favor. Uh, and Chicago on the back-to-back. -back. Chicago's been a hard-trying, hard-effort team, even with the manpower lost up front, the inability to score goals. And I think it's a close, tight, I think probably a 1-1 or 2-2 game uh, going into overtime tonight. So, And I'm certainly not going to turn down the price for a game that I think has got a really good probability for uh, OT at plus 390 uh, at FanDuel. I'm definitely going to grab that. You got it. And by the way, Coin found you that over 6.5 in the – what was that? The, yeah, the Jackets game uh, at minus yeah. 120. So we got you that. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, I think that – now, motivation-wise, the Stars had lost 6-3 to the uh, Predators when they went in to Chicago, and, and we thought you know, that, that they had some motivation because of the loss. To, to, to lose all four games of a road trip at this time of the year is more motivation than... This is going to be... The, the Islanders are going to play this like a playoff game. Uh, I, I truly believe in... in I've been. I don't want to get into how many in a row uh, when I've said this, because when I do it, just I'll wait till it gets to double digits. But I truly believe the Islanders on the puck line 
is the single best bet on the board here, uh, regardless of how well. And Boban was right. Blackhawks have been playing really well at home and staying in these games against tough competition. This is a different type of situation to me when I truly believe the Islanders season is on the line. And you think they've been having fun the last couple of nights in Chicago? Uh, oh God, uh, that, that coach can be scary at times as well. So uh, I think the Islanders minus one half best bet on the board. Uh, I'm on the under six with you, Bobano. I'm happy that you're betting an under. I would like you to open them up more in your this is just so obvious i mean it's just it's six with this chicago team right now i mean i it's i can't believe the total was six i can't i got six and a half on last night's game wow yep i minus well that was buffalo buffalo has been pretty over heavy but still uh, six and a half was pretty asking a lot all right that is our nhl breakdowns we got to get into college basketball here so uh this is our nhl i'm on the panthers minus one at minus 126 bobando's got three spots on that board the panthers team total over three and a half reinhardt goal at plus 122 and they draw there at plus 380 bobando's on the over six and a half in detroit carolina it's a game up long game i'm not on ron crawford spreadsheet play today is the new jersey devils spreadsheet play today is the new jersey devils i found myself on the other side of these uh, much more than I would like to be. Uh, I would like to be never. I would like to never be on the other side of these. Uh, spreadsheet play today is the New Jersey Devils minus one. I'm on the Jackets plus 140. Boban is on the over six and a half and the draw on that one. But shout out to our Ron Crawford. Rodney Barton telling us that Trey Young has been ruled out for the Hawks. That's important information. Thank you for sharing that with us. And then in the final spot on the board, I'm on the under six at minus 115. Islanders minus one half at plus 109. Boban is on New York, Chicago under six at minus 112. And also uh, recognize, too, that the line's been going against these unders once they've come out for whatever reason. I can't possibly explain it. Uh, so don't let the market concern you uh, in this spot, in these spots with Blackhawks unders right now. Just bet them and let it go. Okay, uh, let's roll on. Roll on. And uh, uh, Billy Frieder says now it's bet on the Hawks that Trey is pitiful. So we're going to set that up here. But we got 15 college basketball games to get through. And we'd like to do that in an hour, yep. six minutes. So let me just get this Trey Young information here. And, um, and let's roll. But before we do excellent work last week in college basketball, Bobano. Bobano went 10 and 6 plus 3.18 units. 10 and 6 plus 3.18 units. Uh, so he's now sitting 0.32 units uh, off the black. And now is the time to get into the black and get into double digits and get healthy in the black. So uh, excellent, excellent work. Uh, Bobano, great job. You were just awesome last week. So let's yep. roll into well, Friday's. Yep. Yeah, no, and then the, my Fridays have become my best day of the week. Uh, after all the talk for all the years about how we're tired on Fridays, I finally started figuring it out. But let's roll. We have 5 p.m. Eastern action, which I love. I love a little early Friday action. Fairly Dickinson Knights, 8 and 11, 2 and 2 in the NEC. Fairly Dickinson Knights, the alma mater of our very own Prince of the City, who we don't see enough anymore. At the Stonehill Skyhawks, 2-17, and 0-4 oh in the NEC. We're in southeastern Massachusetts. Let's get into the uh, spot here and the setup here. Fairleigh Dickinson coming off back-to-back -back wins, and the first win was against these very Stonehill Skyhawks, and they needed overtime to do it. So this was just Six days ago, a uh, fairly Dixonson were six and a half point favorites at home, and they got out. Uh, fairly Dickinson had a huge lead, they were up 40 to 17. They won the first half 40 to 23. Then they let their foot off the gas, and they were fortunate to win the basketball game in overtime. Uh, both teams shot poorly from three, but we can expect that from them. Uh, it was a just an eye opening situation for. Fairly, and now they head to Stonehill. Uh, these Skyhawks are just losing and losing and losing and losing. They played great against Fairly Dickinson. They're coming off a 10 point loss to Wagner. Uh, that was on Monday. They lost by by 10. Again, they shot poorly as always, 39.6 percent from the field. Uh, they were five and a half point dogs, and they lose by 10. I wonder what elements Bobano is going to take from what we saw from this squad 
six days ago when they met each other. Do we think because Fairleigh Dickinson is so much better than them that that was the wake up call and they're going to smash and grab here for 40 minutes? We'll have to hear. Let me just set up the line history. We're using bet online openers again. We have our bet online link on our website, pubsportsradio.com. New accounts, you get a hundred percent bonus up to a thousand dollars, and that's not for Bitcoin, that's for anything. And we're one of the few spots where they let that almost all the other sites you have to be Bitcoin. So we have fairly Dickinson opening up at minus one and a half. The first move was towards Stonehill. Uh, this became a pick 'em, and then there's been a huge move today on fairly Dickinson now, three and a half point favorites. From a, to a total scenario here, we have it's sitting at 153. It's minus 120 to the over. This has been all over the map. This got down to 150, and then it got up to 153 and a half an hour ago. Right now, it's 153, so we've had a 10 cent move towards the over. And then when we get to where the cash lies for this one, we have 35% of the tickets and 82% of the cash on Fairleigh Dickinson. You know, the reason why I get so much pause is why on earth would they line it at a pick -em? You have to know that all of the money was going to come in on Fairleigh Dickinson with it lined at a pick -em. It's just hard to comprehend. 74% of tickets, 76% of cash is on the under. It's just hard. I try to maybe Boban can put this all into perspective and shine some light. Take it away. The Knights at the Skyhawks. Not really, because I have nothing on this game. I've nothing stuck out to me. I was looking at an over, but that's kind of in the right range, especially when you factor in that the last meeting was what eighty-one uh, seventy-four and OT, uh, and that was one fifty-five with overtime. So if that game had ended in regulation, it would have stayed under. Um, but I don't trust either team defensively. Uh, both teams are going to play fast. They're in the top one hundred in tempo. Um, I certainly think fairly Dick and they are the better team, but. You know, they beat them in overtime. They did show signs of taking their foot off the gas pedal at home. Can they make sure they, if they play well for 40 minutes, that they are the better of these two teams? I agree. I thought Pickham was a little low, but I'm not going to lay three and a half now. And I wanted to look at the over. And I think the over now is, um, uh, you know, a little bit uh, too high now uh, with where it is. Um, like I was looking for pace because I like the way these two teams, as far as pace line up and they're worse defensively than offensively, but I don't think you're getting any bargain now at what? one fifty two and a half, one fifty three. and a half, one That's what I'm seeing. So pass for me. You know, this is a strange, strange, strange situation. The fact that they would place it at a pick them, yeah. uh, you know, is so fishy. And then, Oh, I guess they didn't place it quite at a pick'em, did, did I? Should I? I guess I should explain that a little differently. It, but it moved to a pick'em. The first move was towards Stonehill, uh, which is strange. And then, then the you have the public actually betting Stonehill, which again is like confounding. Uh, and then, uh, so the, this just doesn't uh, line up for me here. If this was line, if Fairly Dickinson opened up at minus two and became minus four, I would bet them. But the fact that they set up a line where they know they're going to get fairly Dickinson money and actual tickets coming on Stonehill is, again, it just makes absolutely no sense here. And uh, Billy Friedrich says, why would they line this total 152 and a half? These teams have only gone over that number once in the last five combined. And that was the head to head. He says under here and not flush Allen. Yep. Nut Flush in the house says, uh, uh, Caden getting to play hooky from school. He was hooked up with two tickets to the American Express today. So if you hear someone yelling pub sports radio instead of going the hole, that's us. I love it, Nut Flush. I love it. And uh, I hope Caden dreams big, man. We believe in him. So I hope he watches those golfers and, and knows that could be him out there uh, someday. Uh, Jay Jack giving you love. Let's move on to the next spot on the board. Next up for us, 6.30 p.m. Too bad. I wanted 5 p.m. action. 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Georgetown, Hoyas, 8-9, 1-5 in the Big East. Xavier Musketeers, 9-8, 3-3 three Big East. Cinta Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. One thing that's happened on these Fridays is it's my most volume in college basketball with Bobano here on the show and us capping each and every game. So I can let go of certain spots. And I let go of two spots last week in North Florida and Stetson that were both winners as well. Uh, and uh, so I, I'm excited. I love these Fridays. So let's get back to work here. Next up for us is Georgetown Xavier. At Bet Online, we have Xavier minus 12 and a half at minus 112. Opened up minus 14. So it's now 12. So we have a point and a half move towards a Georgetown. Then from a total side of things oh god i gotta set this up better i'll have it set up better here when we move forward but from a total side of things we are sitting here 
with a 149. 149. It opened up at 148. We got up to 149 and a half and a little bit of buyback. So a point move to the over and a very slight move towards the dog in Georgetown. For the over, it's public, but people are uh, not big bets on it. 62% of tickets and 32% of the cash. For the spread, though, 49% of the tickets and 61% of cash on Georgetown, which obviously piques my interest on these Hoyas who have not been playing good basketball. Lost their last two. I mean, they played pretty tough at UConn. You know, yeah. losing 80-67 there. That was on the heels of a 74-70 loss at home to Seton Hall. They only beat DePaul in the game before that by three. And they have a rest advantage over Xavier. Uh, Xavier just played on Tuesday night in that 85-71 win at home over Butler. Uh, they had beaten one at Providence by 20 uh, uh, on Saturday. So interesting situation. Saturday and Tuesday for Xavier. Uh, Georgetown played on Sunday in that loss at UConn. Take it away for us here. Bobano, game two on the board. Hoyas, Musketeers. Yeah, for me, two bets on this game, side and total. Um, I'm going to take the big, ugly underdog here, Georgetown. Um, it's not pretty. It's not something I'm overly confident in because this is a very erratic bunch uh, right now. It really, really is. I mean, Georgetown has covered one on the road at Notre Dame, covered at Butler on the road, but they've been blown out by 30 at Marquette. They were blown out at home by Creighton uh, by 17, and they lose to uh, Seton Hall at home, and they barely beat DePaul. Don't cover in that game at home. But they just went on the road against by far the best team in the Big East and one of the best teams in the country, UConn, and covered the number wire to wire. 80, I thought their effort was very good. And the reason why I'm going to put my faith in Georgetown is because I, even though this team's not very good, I trust Ed Cooley. I love this guy as a coach. He was great at Providence. He's got a tough situation here in Georgetown. Give him time. This program, I think, will get better. And I think with a team that's coached by a quality head man, a coach like this you see teams like this for as bad as they can be sometimes they get better as the season goes on and it, maybe gradually you're going to see that with georgetown hell they've covered two in a row so maybe it's a sign that georgetown is going to start to be and this to me is more than anything i cannot trust xavier right now as a double digit favorite they're not defending at all their de defense is terrible it wasn't very good last year either even though they got to the tournament and they're still struggling at that end of the basketball court. Now, they are a great offensive team, and they play fast. Uh, there's no question about that. That's why they've gone over in three straight games. Um, so, you know, they they will score on Georgetown. Georgetown's got a tough time defensively. They're not great. You know, we saw them give up 81 to Marquette, 77 to Creighton, 80 to the UConn. So, Xavier will score. But will Xavier defend enough as a favor to this magnitude to, to cash a ticket? I'm not so sure about that. I really am not. This is just not a very good defensive team. And last year at Xavier Cintas Center, we saw a Georgetown 17-point dog. They lost by 13. Now, losing by 13 won't get it done here. But I think Xavier this year, a little less trustworthy. Georgetown, two covers in a row. I think there's value there. And keep in mind, too, what's coming up for Xavier. They've got Creighton and UConn coming up. Back-to-back -back games against two of the better teams in this conference. This is a sleepy, maybe lethargic type of let's get out of here with a win and kind of spot here for Xavier uh, on their home court. So I think Georgetown can stay within the number. I'll take Georgetown plus 12 and a half minus 104 at FanDuel. And I am also liking the over in this game. No question about it. Over 148 and a half uh, minus 110 at ProLine Plus as far as the uh, over is concerned. Like I said, Xavier's gone over in three straight, three straight head to head meetings with Georgetown and Xavier have gone over the total and they've flown over the total. The last three meetings have had 172, 191, and uh, 177 as far as total points, way over this number. So uh, Georgetown and over for me. You got it. Hoyas plus 12 and a half minus 104, the over 148 and a half minus 110. I'm going to join you on the Hoyas. So that will be my first. And, uh, let me get the numbers on Cooley as an underdog. Cause I talked about this angle going back to when he coached at Providence. Absolutely terrific. What's, what's the uh, record here? Uh, underdog 74 and 51 ATS as a road underdog 45 and 24 ATS as a uh, 45 and 24 ATS as a road underdog. 
and I think it's uh, uh, pretty good overall as an underdog. So that, that this is where you want to back a team coached by Ed Cooley, catching points. Let's head over to Richmond, Virginia for the next spot on the board, home of our Smoke and Mirrors, 7 p.m. Eastern. St. Louis Billikens, 8 and 9, 1 and 3 in the 8th, and at the VCU Rams, 10 and 7. Also just 2 and 2 in conference play. We're at Stewart C. Siegel Center there in Richmond. Take a look at the situation here. We have St. Louis uh, couldn't follow up that win uh, over St. Joe's, 88-85 at home, lost by 5 at Dayton. Uh, that was on Tuesday night. So, uh, you know, uh, rest disadvantage. They were 11 and a half point dogs. They had the lead after the first half. You know, they played some good basketball, held they to 28.6% from three and were in that basketball game till the, to the bitter end. So, but that was just on Tuesday. Uh, VCU last played on Saturday, their second straight win, uh, both coming on the road, beat LaSalle uh, on Saturday and just shut LaSalle down. Now, they played Lucy Goosey and turned the ball over 15 times and, and didn't cover. They were six-and-a-half-point uh, favorites, and they won by six. Uh, and they were losing in the first half. I mean, they, they played disjointed, ugly basketball. Will they be a little sharper here? Of course, that's the question that we are asking here. So let's take a look uh, with VCU with the rest advantage, back-to-back -back road games to get their first in-conference wins. We have VCU sitting here as big favorites, eight-and-a-half point favorites. They opened up at eight-and-a-half, quickly went to nine, back to eight-and-a-half, down to eight, and now at eight-and-a-half. So uh, at Bet Online, we've had no movement on the side. And from a total perspective here, over 147, this opened up at 148, got down to 146 and a half. It's at 147 right now. So we have a one point move to the under and no movement whatsoever on the side. So we have this St. Louis Billikens with 32% of the tickets and 50% of the cash. The public is backing VCU coming home here with the long break. And from a total perspective, 91% of the tickets are on the under. We don't have any uh, cash information. 2,139 tickets have been have come in. So take it away for us here. Bo Bano, Billikens, Rams, and Richmond. Yeah, this is a good uh, matchup here. Uh, we'll see how it goes. A VCU, I, I've never been a big fan of VCU this year for some reason. Uh, they, I don't don't think they played great, consistent. They had the loss to Memphis. I th felt when they played better teams, they didn't play well. They got blown out by St. Bonaventure on their home court. who's a very good team. St. Bonaventure's rolling, uh, so give them credit. Uh, they lose as 11-point favorites to George Washington at home. I'm like, what's wrong with this VCU team? But they go on the road against George Mason, win outright as dogs. They pound LaSalle. Uh, not pound LaSalle, but they won and covered 71-65. So back-to-back -back road wins. That being said, I like what I'm starting to see out of St. Louis. You know, the Billikens, they've always been – you know, a pretty good team in this conference. They had their lumps early in the season, uh, but they've been better from a point spread standpoint, six and four ATS the last 10. Uh, and if you look at some of these recent games, NC State, they nearly covered. They had a big lead in that game and let it, or not a big lead, but they had a lead and they let it get away. Loyola, Chicago, that game was pretty close. They let it get away from them late. Not the greatest game against George Mason, but since then we saw them win against St. Joe's at home. Pretty good team at Dayton. Uh, a great result for St. Louis, a very good effort from them. Dayton's played really good basketball, especially at home. Anthony Grant doing a nice job there. 12-point dogs, they go to Dayton, they lose by five, uh, and they cover the number in this one, in that game. So um, I don't trust VCU laying points here. Uh, give me St. Louis here, the Billikens, plus the points. I think uh, this is a spot where I think St. Louis can hang, uh, can compete here. I see, I see them starting to turn a corner play some better basketball. I know they're 0-5 straight up on the road this year, but they still went to Dayton and they lost by five. Hey, give me a five-point loss here at VCU. I'll take it because that cash is a ticket for me. And let's not forget VCU just 4-7-1 and one ATS at home this year here at the Convocation Center. So it hasn't been that same dominant, strong uh, home court that we have seen in years past from VCU. I just find they're very inconsistent. You know, some games they'll have a good shooting night and uh, the defense doesn't show up, like the George Washington and the Bonnie game. And then there's some nights where, you know, they'll, they'll struggle offensively uh, like they did to Norfolk State when they lost at home by double-digit favorites. So uh, to me, this is just St. Louis is starting to play a little bit better. I was encouraged by that road performance against Dayton that they can do enough to keep this inside the number here at VCU tonight. So St. Louis plus 8.5, minus 110 at DraftKings. 
Uh, plus eight and a half, minus one ten for Bobano on St. Louis. Gifted Cartel says VCU back home with momentum. VCU minus eight says they're going to take off in the second half. G Martinez says St. Louis blow, blows. I'm with you though. I'm with you with this uh, ugly dog. I'm going to join you on St. Louis plus eight and a half. So the last, the only two sides that we've been given by Bobano, Hoyas plus 12 and a half and St. Louis plus eight and a half. I'm going to be rolling on both of those. He's also on the over in Georgetown, Xavier. We stayed off fairly Dickinson, Stonehill. We roll on 7 p.m. Eastern. We have the Quinnipiac Bobcats at the Siena Saints. To add flavor to this game, Bobano gave us Siena last week as 10 and a half point dogs, and it was an easy cover on Friday. And the taint play of the day is on these goddamn Bobcats of Quinnipiac. <laughs> Sienna followed that victory last not list uh, they covered uh, the cash victory I should say they they lost 67 63 at Canisius uh, as 10 and a half point dogs and, and Bobano was on them by going into Niagara You're and beating them. them yep I remember that one 93 88 and to take add more to that last Friday Bobano was on Niagara gave them Niagara and Niagara won by like 24 points so uh Sienna playing some good ball. They were five and a half point dogs. They shot 62.5% from the field and 50% from three. What our guy Matty Ice was saying was he thinks that there is no chance that Sienna can follow up that kind of shooting. They've only been at home once over their last five games, and there they shot 45.6% from the field, but just 27.8% from three, and they got badly blown out by Fairfield. So it's very, a very interesting comeuppance by the Siena Saints, and very curious to see if Bobano moves on them here. Quinnipiac hasn't played since last Friday. Their third straight win, they went into Marist and they beat them uh, comfortably 66-55. And I say comfortably, they were down four at halftime. Uh, they were one and a half point dogs and they completely took over in the second half. They held Marist to 22 points in the second half, held them to 23.8% shooting from three. So that is our situation. Let's get into the line history here. So we have the Bobcats with the rest advantage. Uh, Sienna played Niagara on Monday night. So uh, we have the Bobcats. Wow, this is, line has moved towards Quinnipiac in a hurry. Uh, this opened up at three and a half, got to four and a half, back to three and a half. And then since what? Since nine this morning, it's just been a huge move towards. Quinnipiac. They got up to six. They're back at five and a half, but it's a, it's a heavily juiced five and a half. So, but six mostly a, across the market. So, a huge move to Quinnipiac. From a total standpoint, we are dealing with a 148. This has come up from 143 and a half. So, at least uh, the, the books are concerned that there could be some continued decent shooting from Siena. A uh, Quinnipiac. Sienna has 55% of the tickets on the over and 96% of the cash and 61% of the tickets and 78% of the cash is on Quinnipiac. Uh, my issue here is that uh, we're just too late. We're too late with this market move. I mean, when you hear Matty Ice give it out at four and a half, that sounds reasonable. Is it still reasonable at six? Let's hear what Bobano has to say. Bobcat Saints in MVP Arena in Albany, New York. Um, well, I... Look, I, I obviously it's going to be tough to duplicate that kind of performance against Niagara, and it's not like Siena was a great offensive team before that. Uh, still ranked in the 300s in offensive efficiency, but maybe that's a sign they're going to turn things around. Now, keep in mind the team they played, Niagara, plays very fast, and they're not a great defensive team, Niagara, either. So that played a part in that 93-point output that we saw uh, from uh, the Saints in that victory over the Purple Eagles. Now, can they have anything close to that here is going to be the big question. Uh, Quinnipiac's won three in a row. Last two games in conference play, Manhattan, a 17-point home win. Uh, Marist, an 11-point road win. Uh, you know, they've played really good basketball. You look at what they've been able to do on the road this year. Uh, they've been a pretty good road team as far as ATS is concerned for the most part. Head-to-head. When you look at it, Quinnipiac won at Siena last year, uh, 66-63, only by three, though. Uh, and they won at Siena 77-71 two years ago. So they've actually, it's been a road 
dominated series here. Siena's done well at Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac's done well at Siena. We'll see if that carries over. But I've been riding Siena. I don't feel totally comfortable doing that tonight because the market is starting to adjust on them. But it's a classic case of a team that even though they're three and three straight up and they're still only six and 10 ATS on the season, four of those six covers for the entire season have been in Siena's last five games. So it's a classic case of a morphing team, Siena, a team that was so bad in November and December that now in January, they've got a ton of betting value ATS. And I just won't go against that, especially when they've covered four of the five. I'm not on them, though, either, because I do think Quinnipiac has matchup advantages. I do think Quinnipiac's the better of these two teams, and they have had a lot of success on the road here at Siena the last couple of years. So it's a pass for me from the side. Uh, it's an overbet for me as far as the total goes. I do agree with this market move on the total, and that's where I land on this game. I think there's some better offensive performances coming for Siena. I don't think that game against Niagara was a one-off. A lot of their shooting numbers showed positive regression, was on the way for them. And I think maybe we saw a little too much of it against Niagara, but I think we're going to continue to see them just steadily shoot the ball better. Quinnipiac's going to play fast, and we know they're a very good offensive team. So uh, I like over 148 and a half here, minus 110 at bet 365. Oh, sorry. I was setting something up there. Uh, Bobano is moving on the over. What was that? 148? Yeah, 140. Oh, sorry. There's 148 minus 115 at uh, Bookmaker. So let's grab that. Bobano on the over 148 minus uh, 115. I'm going to have to stay off of that spot. We got Smoke and Tree in the house. A gifted cartel. It likes Quinnipiac first half, but Siena to cover the basketball game here. These are the teams uh, I love in January, college basketball. Teams that nobody could touch them with a 10-foot pole early in the season. They're so bad. And now here they are, 4-1 and one ATS. They've, they've covered six point spreads this year. Four of them have been in Siena's last five games. So that's not a team I want to go against. They've been undervalued. Coin wants to know your looks and thoughts on this huge, huge divisional round of football games. But I want everybody to join us on NFL Pub Hub tomorrow to get them. But if we have time, I will ask Bobano. Sounds like is... I'm on tomorrow. Oh, we uh, need you. You're running hot right now. Like I said, you would, man. Season two champion. Oh, last hot. week was phenomenal. Yep. Yeah, man. I go milk. That, that the one thing that I've done and, and proudly is just I put on the winners over and over and over and over again. Uh, so you see the same people, but if they're winning, they're, they're on. That so we want to get kind of like also, a reward for doing yeah, well. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And also don't forget that we have our gold membership upgrade race. And I carried, I won yesterday and I put my 50 bucks back in the pot. So there's a hundred bucks in store for our race today. A hundred bucks in store. We'll do that right after NBA with LJ from H Town. Uh, so Coin found you that over 148 at minus 110 over at. Yeah, Circa. we can use that. Yeah, I guess we can use the Vegas books. Cool. Oh, I, yeah, I would have cool. mentioned Circa, but yeah, I don't. I don't. For some reason, when I try to give the best number on this show, I don't use the Vegas books because I'm not sure if that's kosher. Oh, yeah. No, that's but, very okay. Well, good to know. I'll we'll use that then. Yep. Couldn't be more kosher. Legal Vegas books. You kidding me? Yeah. It's the it's the offshores that maybe we shouldn't be. Yeah, using, exactly. You know? Yeah. Okay, let's roll. Let's Even roll on. Pro line plus bets. That's the one we should be leery of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's that roll Ontario on. Ontario government. Yeah. Next up, seven p.m. Eastern. Niagara Purple Eagles. What a roller coaster ride of a season. These Purple Eagles have had seven and nine, three and three in the Metro Atlantic at Ryder Bronx, five and twelve, two and four. We're in Lawrenceville, New Jersey for. This one, let's touch on the rest situation first and foremost. Um, Ryder played on Sunday. Niagara played on Monday. So Niagara beats Fairfield on this show, given out by Bobano. Then they beat him by 24. And then they lose at home to Siena next out, the wild world of the Metro Atlantic. Ryder wins back-to-back -back games over Canisius, a good team in overtime, then beat up on Manhattan, then head to Marist and on Sunday and lose by 23 points. They lose by 23, uh, and they shot 50% from three and lost by 23. They were out-rebounded, and they lost a the turnover battle by nine. Uh, they looked horrible. They were down 39-24 in the first half. They looked bad, and they shot the ball well. That's when I find it most difficult 
Like, do you expect to bounce back from a basketball team? If they shot the ball poorly, like, well, obviously it's going to progress to the mean. But here when they shoot very well and get blown out, then what the hell do you expect from the Ryder Bronx? I guess, well, let's hear what Bobano has to say, and then I'll just evaluate it rather than giving my own thoughts. Uh, I'm not the expert in this, so let's keep uh, rolling. Let's get into the line history here uh, for this spot. We have Niagara plus three. At minus 110. They opened up at plus three. They got down to plus one and a half. Uh, this was at 11 last night. And then it's back to plus three. So we're right back where we started. And then from a total, we're sitting at 145. Uh, this opened up at 149 and a half. So it's dropped four and a half points towards the under. When we take a look at the cash flow, 38% of tickets and 50% of cash is on Niagara. And when we look at the total, 47% of tickets and 95% of cash is on the over. And yet it's dropped four points absolutely wild take it away for us this one is fascinating purple eagles bronx in jersey that is wild because i have zero respect for that under move none at all it's baffling to me it makes no sense whatsoever to me that this under is being hit in this game with these two teams let me rhyme off the conference numbers because again we're at that time of year now we're getting data and data points for conference play uh, here in college basketball. Let me tell you what Niagara and Ryder have done here as far as conference play is concerned. We know Niagara plays fast. We know they're a pretty awful defensive team. That's the way they've been all season. They're fourth in the conference in tempo out of 11 teams. Um, Ryder's seventh. But more importantly, Niagara's second offensive efficiency in Metro Atlantic play. Second. Second most efficient offense in the conference. Ryder's the fourth most efficient offense in the conference. Defensively, you've got Niagara, the 10th uh, most effect, efficient def defense, and Ryder, the 11th most efficient defense. So you've got teams that are both much better offensively than they are defensively. You've got teams that are, in Niagara's case, going to play very fast. Uh, Ryder is going to be, and you know, not a brisk tempo, but they're not a snail either. Um, and you look at what Niagara's done as far as overs are concerned. It's been over Palooza. Uh, to the tune of 7-1 and one for Niagara to the over in their last eight games. You know me with rider overs, Jimmy. How many times on this show have I been talking and using rider overs on my card? Uh, it's And it's just the gift that keeps on giving. Riders 8-2 and two to the over in the last 10 games. So you have two teams that are not going to play slow. You have Niagara and Ryder both much better offensively than they are defensively. What am I missing here? Why is this total going under? And you know I'm not scared to go against a move of this magnitude. And that's exactly what I am doing here. So uh, I like Niagara Ryder uh, over the total here in this one. Uh, you can get over 144 is out there, minus 110 at Heritage Sports. So that's over 144, minus 110 at Heritage Sports. And as far as the side is concerned, I am on the side here, Jimmy. Plus three and a half, minus 110 at Bet Rivers. I like Niagara, the Purple Eagles here. I don't want to lay points with Niagara with that defense. But they can score. They're a good offensive team. They've been excellent road underdogs uh, and, and, and excellent on the road overall. Their last five road games, uh, this team is a perfect 5-0 and ATS. And here in conference play, they're to their last two road games. I think I was on Niagara that night on this show, 81-67. Iona on the Sunday that same weekend, 9.5 points. has been a very good road team here. So... Side and total for me. Niagara plus three and a half over 144. You got it. I'm riding with you with Niagara. Uh, I don't see it as a rider bounce back. I see it as a Niagara bounce back. They have to play with some more defense. Uh, and this is their role under Greg Paulus on the road and especially as dogs. They've been very good. I think they covered at Syracuse, if I'm not mistaken. As Yes, they did. Covered at I Syracuse as road dogs. Yep. I love it. I'm right with you. Uh, Bobano also on the over 44. Uh, let's roll. Uh, Frank, Frank uh, joining us. Said, what up? What up? What up? Y'all said, couldn't resist. Had to subscribe and wait five minutes so I could have access to the chat. Let y'all know. Quinnipiac Sierra. Excuse me. I suppose I almost, I almost never have to. Almost sneeze on a show. It's I'm, I'm never having in my life. Sienna has this kid back from injury. Pure shooter can't miss. Says take Sienna plus four my treat. Thank me later. Happy Friday from Frank. Sienna or perhaps, as Teddy Covers would say, Sienna or pass for this better. That's what it would be for me. 
Giovanni Emaduru is who he's speaking about. Uh, our pleasure, Frank. Thanks for being a part of this, man. Welcome, welcome. All right, so uh, let's roll on. Next up for us, we stay in the Metro Atlantic. We had the Emmitsburg, Maryland. Maris Red Foxes, eight and six, three and two in conference amount. St. Mary Mountaineer, six and ten, two and three in conference. We're not arena for this one. Billy Frieder, by the way, saying Niagara five and one against the spread as road yeah. dogs. I knew it was uh, good this season. I like it. I like the spot. Let's talk about this one here. We have Marking that. A long losing streak with that home win over Ryder on Sunday. Oh, well, four game losing streak, maybe not ridiculously long, and and that included that very tight loss to Notre Dame. the The only bad loss was at Fairfield, you know, eighty two sixty one. Other, I guess the maybe the home loss to Quinney uh, wasn't very nice either, sixty six fifty five. But they're coming off the eighty three uh, sixty win uh, at home versus Ryder, and now they head out onto the road. And again, we talked about that spot. The rider played, shot the ball well, just played really sloppy. And Maris shot the ball well, only turned the ball over six times and uh, out rebounded Ryder. So Maris looked good there. Uh, let's talk about Mount St. Mary's and where they are at right now. Uh, these. Whew. These Mountaineers are sitting here with two straight losses. They lost at St. Peter's by six, and they that was on. Um, uh, Sunday two weeks ago, and then they last Sunday they lost by 17 at Iona, very very ugly. But they did win at Canisius, or no, at home versus Canisius. Uh, they were beaten up in the second half pretty badly against Iona. You know they were just five and a half point dogs and lost that one by 17. Let's get into the line history here for that one. And big shout out to our guy Nut Flush Allen, now a gold member. We have the uh race now $100 in the pool for today's race for one uh, lucky member of our Pop Sports Radio Gold membership. Here we have Mares at plus three and a half at minus 110. That's exactly where they open, so there's been no movement on the side on the total here for this Marist Mount St. Mary's spot. We're dealing with a 133 minus 107 to the over. Opened up at 132, got up to 133 and a half and dropped back to 133. And then when we get over to the cash flow for this one, 87% of the tickets are on Maris. 87 and 72% of the cash. That's wild. Absolutely wild. And then 17% of the tickets, 63% of cash on the under. That's a lot of people on Maris, which makes Mount St. Mary's quite appealing. Take it away for us here, Bobano, a little Metro, more Metro Atlantic action, Marist, Mount St. Mary's. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting uh, situation here with these two teams. You got Marist playing pretty well in non-conference play. They actually really did. And actually, they started conference play well. They beat Iona on the road as dogs, Manhattan at home. Then they stumbled a little bit. They had the blowout loss to Fairfield. Uh, blowout loss at home to, uh, as we talked about, though, pretty solid Quinnipiac team. But man, did they bounce back against Ryder, 83 to 60 uh, in that game. I think Marist is pretty good or has the potential to be pretty good. Mount St. Mary's on the uh, flip side, uh, they've struggled. They've lost three of their last four uh, coming into this game. We'll see if they can uh, turn that around. Marist has been a good ATS team, 10 and four against the number. And this kind of like with Niagara, when I'm going to back Marist, I prefer them particularly as road underdogs. I don't like laying points with this team. They're not a great favorite, but they're a pretty solid underdog. So I know you mentioned the splits there, the betting splits, and it makes you think, yeah, oh, it's maybe a little leery if you like Marist, but I got to admit, I do like Marist here. Uh, plus a three and a half, minus 110 at uh, FanDuel. And this is another game where it's I'm, I'm also on the total over again here, 132 and a half, minus 110 at uh, Bet Rivers. I just think it's light. Marist is starting to shoot a little bit better. They're obviously not going to play very fast, but if you look at the conference numbers uh, lately, we've seen improvements in this team at the offensive end of the court uh, just gradually. So we'll see if they can maintain that. Like They're up to eighth now. Even though they're a very slow-paced team, they've improved their offensive efficiency for sure. Meanwhile, Mount St. Mary's, they're good offensively. They're worse defensively. And you're only talking 132 and a half in this game. So uh, over and Marist for me. Uh, Marist plus three and a half at what number or what juice? Minus 110. Minus yeah. 110. Well, this is our first spot where we will be on opposite sides here. I'm oh, going, very good. I'm going to not expect I, that I, the outlier performance against Ryder at home. 
let's get you back. Mount St. Mary's off. is good offensively. That's why I kind of like the over too, because I feel if Mount St. Mary's covers, it's going over the total. Definitely. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting spot. I mean, you have Maris feeling good about themselves, finally snapping that four-game losing streak, and that included that great road performance against Notre Dame. Uh, you know, so that shows that they can travel. So I get your look there. But, you know, two ugly performances on the road from Mount St. Mary's. The last time they were at home was against Canisius, and, you know, they played well. They were two-and-a-half-point favorites. They won by five. They shot 50.8% from the field. So then when we go further into what Mount St. Mary's has been doing, you know, at home – beat Canisius 74-69. Before that, they beat Long Island 87-59. Uh, before that one, they beat Siena. They destroyed Siena uh, 80-48. So there's three straight home wins for them. Now they lost to Howard before that. Um, lost beat Coppin State. So this is a team that's 4-1 and one at home this year. Uh, you see all these games they played. It's hard to imagine that that's it for, you know, Home pro or were any of those on a neutral? Let me just make sure none of those were on a neutral here. Uh, because it's no, those are they played five games at home, won four outright, and I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be on them. So, uh, but let's keep rolling on. Let's keep rolling on here. That's the first spot where we are uh, looking at it differently, and we have Joe T on that over. Not only that, but his best model play is our next game's over. Uh, Saint. Peters, Peacocks, nine and five, five and zero oh in the Metro Atlantic at the Fairfield Stags, ten and seven, four and two in the Metro Atlantic. Um, and gifted cartel saying those teams are trash on the road, though. You know, we'll see. Uh, this is what it just adds more elements of, of fun and interest to to the action. Uh, from you know, uh, we'll see how it bangs out. But by the way, his second favorite spot we will talk about a little bit later. But this is his favorite spot on the show. And Jay Smooth, Smooth Balls play of the day. Look at that. We have a new play of the day. The smooth balls play of the day is on the over in this one. So we have Joe T's favorite spot on the over. We have Jay Smooth, who you can run with in San Antonio, also on the over. So let's set this one up here with a lot of interest here in the over in St. Peter's. Oh, God, sorry. It's taking me a second. I'm a little behind. I had too many games up to go over the home information here. Okay, so here we go. We have... More Metro Atlantic action. St. Peter's Peacocks at the Fairfield Stags. Well, this is setting up here. Let me just go right into the line history instead of waiting on that. A uh, line history wise, we're sitting here with St. Peter's is three and a half point dogs at Bed Online. Three and a half point dogs. They opened up at four, dropped to three and a half, and got back to four. So we've had no movement, seven cents of movement towards Fairfield at this number. And from a total side of things, we are sitting here with a 135 and a half juice to the under. Uh, some books have gone to 135 or kept the 135 and a half juiced. Uh, this opened up at 133 and a half, though. So this has climbed two points with our squad. Then from a arrest situation for both of these Metro Atlantic squads, we have St. Peter's in the throes of a big winning streak, and Fairfield would have one as well if they didn't get destroyed. You know, at Niagara, 96-72 last Friday. Uh, so St. Peter's continuing their winning streak. They're coming off an 81-68 win at Manhattan on Sunday. And then on Monday, Fairfield went into Canisius and destroyed them by 25. Let's take a look at where the cash is then for this one. We have... On the total, 43% of the tickets and 75% of the cash on the under, but we see this clearly moving towards the over and best bets here on the over. Then we have 23% of the tickets and 42% of the cash on the Peacocks. Take it away for us here, Bobano, Peacock Stags in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, it's actually two teams that are um, playing quite well right now. Fairfield, uh, they're 9-1 and one straight up, 8-2 and two against the number their last 10. St. Peter's is 8-2 and two straight up. Uh, and uh, Seven and while well, there's been one game that wasn't lined, but uh, seven and two ATS their last nine. But there's no question about it, both of these teams are playing well, so it's a bit, bit of a tricky game from a side perspective right now. Um, this is the number one defensive team efficiency wise in the conference, St. Peter's. Uh, and uh, but offensively, you know, at times they can struggle. We that's been that way for St. Peter's for years. But the last few games, you know, we've seen this team hit 70, uh, 60, uh, 69, 70 against Mount St. Mary's, 81 against Manhattan. 
So you're seeing just a short-term uptick. Fair, Fairfield's a very good offensive team. Uh, there's no question about that. They're number one in this conference. They're going to play fast, third tempo in the conference. I agree with the chat. Everyone, you know, like making a case for over here. I can as well. Fairfield's been an over machine. Six straight overs for Fairfield. St. Peter's suddenly has gone over in three of the last four games. Now, a lot of those totals were, um, you know, 120s. So we've seen a little bit of a bump now. We're talking 135 now, which is a little bit of a tall total for a St. Peter's game. But you can also say it's a very light total for a Fairfield game, depending on which way you want to look at it. So I'm going to go over 134 and a half minus 115 uh, at Pitano. I lean St. Peter's because St. Peter's has done well in this venue uh, right now. And, and I love St. Uh, St. Peter's as a road dog, whether it's this year or last year or two years ago, back when Shaheen Holloway coached them before he went to Seton Hall. Uh, they're just phenomenal. You know, as road underdog St. Peter's. I don't like betting against St. Peter's when they're catching points on the road. So St. Peter's are nothing, but I respect what Fairfield's doing. So uh, I don't think I'm going to make St. Peter's plus the points official. I will just stick with over. And what's the best line that you have in front of you? 134 and a half minus 115, Batano. You are locked in over 134 and a half minus 115 for Boban. I don't think I, I think this is tough. I, I think I'm going to stay off of the side here. Uh, there has been a move in the last hour, a real legit move towards Fairfield. So Heritage now has a four and a half. I had to refresh everything here. I mean, I said it four to four, but I had to refresh the seat across the board. And we have four and a half, a bookmaker, a four and a half at Pinnacle. And it's even uh, very, very slightly juiced St. Peter. So the line's moving towards Fairfield. I'm going to be off of this one here. Bobano on the over. Jay Smooth on the over. Joe T on the over. And we roll on. Next up for us, 7 p.m. Eastern, we have the Canisius Golden Griffins. 7 and 9, 2 and 4 in the Metro Atlantic at the Iona Gales. We're in New Rochelle, New York for this one. Let's set it up from a rest perspective here first. We have Canisius coming off that loss on Monday at home to Fairfield, 88-63. It was embarrassing. They also barely got past Siena at home, two ugly home games. Uh, they had lost on the road previously, you know, lost or at Ryder in overtime, and then at Mount St. Mary, 74-69. So there's been a lot of losing from the Golden Griffins. And again, 10.5-point favorites against Siena and barely got through that one. Their lone win. Iona coming off that big win against Mount St. Mary's on Sunday, 87-70. We did touch on that and how well they shot. That came on the heels of two losses, one at St. Peter's, 69-57, and then at home uh, versus Niagara, 75-73. So uh, Iona stopping their two-game losing streak and Canisius going right back to their losing ways, getting just walloped at home to Fairfield. Let's get into the line history here for this one. We have Canisius now 8 point dogs they open up as five point dogs this got as high last night at 11 33 p.m at a better line as nine so there'd been a four point move uh, towards iona we have a one point uh, buyback but three points of overall movement here in this one when we get to the total for canisius iona we are sitting here at 144 and a half uh, that's where it opened so with so much move on the side, we only have five cents of movement towards the over on the total. And then when we get to the cash flow uh, for this spot, we have, uh, sorry, here we go. 87% of the tickets and 87% of the cash on Canisius. And this has moved heavily against them. I mean, that's just uh, wild. Then 57% of the tickets, 90% of cash on the over, and almost no movement. My guy, Son Dizzle, in the house. Frank, giving us greetings from Denver. Uh, great to have you rolling with us. Uh, Jake Burns says, Canisius either covers easily or gets blown out. Take it away, Bobano. Next spot on the board, the Metro Atlantic, the Golden Griffins at the Gales. Yeah, I'd uh, like to see what the uh, Iona Gales track record is this year when they've been larger favorites. And I'm talking about like seven points or more, which is now what they are in this game, because I'd be willing to guarantee it's not good. Uh, and I'm already looking at it here, going back to the end of November. Marist, they were seven and a half point home favorites. They lost outright. 17 point favorites to St. Francis, Pennsylvania. They won by seven. They did not cover. 
Uh, nine and a half point home favorites against Niagara 12 days ago at home. They lost outright. Um, they, they, I don't trust Iona. I'm close to moving on Canisius here. I really am. Uh, no, you know, Canisius is not good. I get it. But man, Iona to me is not what they were in the Patino days. You know, I don't think they've, they've got a couple good players that can fill it up, but I just don't think they've got the overall starting five that they used to have. I don't think they're defensively that they're consistent by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, they got walloped by double digits uh, uh, against St. Peter's. They lose to Niagara as big chalk. And it's not like Niagara is a great defensive team either. Um, and now they did bounce back against Mount St. Mary's, 87-70, their last game. But I'm telling you what, when when they've been bigger chalk this year, I, Iona, it's not been good. I know Canisius is 0-5 ATS their last five games. It's been rough. A couple of those losses were competitive, though. You know, high point by set. High point's a really good team this year, really good. They only lost that by eight, Canisius. They lost by five at Mount St. Mary's. They lost by three, you know, at Ryder. You know, so the losses other than the Fairfield loss, they were competitive losses. They were in the game, and they're coming off just a, the worst loss of all when they lost that game 88-63 to Fairfield at home a few days ago. I think you get a good effort from Canisius. And I don't trust Iona in this price range, so I'm going to move on it. I am. I'm going to take Canisius here, plus 8.5, uh, minus 110 uh, at um, Caesars. That looks like is the best number there. This is another over for me as well, over 144.5, minus 110. The way I see it, Iona wins and covers. It's because they light it up. They scored 90, which they could against Canisius, and the game will go over. So one and one worst-case scenario is what I think here. Canisius over the total. Side and total for Bobano in our final spot in the Metro Atlantic. We head over to the Northeastern Conference here. Uh, but big shout out to Crystal Craig, now a PSR Gold member. And Crystal, you have uh, you are now in the running for the hundred dollar race here at the end of NBA with LJ from H Town. So a hundred dollars. We'll be giving out fifty dollars every Wednesday and Friday. But if if Jeff myself or Preston win, we're going to put it right back in the pool. So it'll just uh, double up. So it's a hundred bucks. And uh, I was, I uh, felt the glory of winning the first race. So it's right back in hundred bucks today. Let's move on. Let's move on to the NEC here, the Northeast conference. And in this Northeast conference, your leaders, the central Connecticut blue devils at home in this first one, Bobano nine and seven, three and oh in conference. We're in new Britain. Connecticut going up against the Lemoyne Dolphins, who've lost two straight. They lost at home to Merrimack by four points on Saturday. They followed that up with yet another loss. They lost to Sacred Heart 80 73 on Monday, shot 29% from three. They out rebounded, but were a little sloppy. They were in the game the whole time, uh, but they could not deliver one and a half point home dogs, and they lose 80 to 73. Uh, Connecticut's been rolling. Uh, they also just faced Merrimack, beat them 75-70 at home to keep this uh, winning streak intact. And they're playing good ball. Uh, they shot 30% from the field and turned the ball over 15 times, but the one, the, they won the rebound battle, and they beat Merrimack, a good basketball team, uh, at a pick -em. So that is the situation. Let's get into the line history here for this one. We have... Central Connecticut, seven and a half point favorites. They opened up at seven and a half point favorites. So there's just been a five cent move towards them. That's it. Five cent move from a total side of things here. We have a 144 at minus 110. It's opened up at 142. So we have two points of movement towards the over. And when we get into the cash flow for this spot, we have it 50 50 on the total, but 80% of cash on the over. Books caring about those big bets that have come in on the over. And then on the side, you have 73% of the tickets on Central Connecticut and 98% of the cash. 73% of tickets, 98% of the cash, and they have not moved it. They have not moved it. Good. That, God, that makes Lemoyne attractive here. Bobano, do they have a chance? Uh, every every team has a chance. It's just a question of whether you trust them enough. Uh, and, uh, you know, Lemoyne's also, keep in mind, you know, they're a new entry into Division One basketball this year. So you kind of figured that they were going to have uh, some growing pains uh, throughout the course of the long season. And uh, I think we're definitely seeing uh, some signs of that. Tough to step in front of CCSU, though, right now. I mean, um, they're playing some really good basketball. Uh, they've covered every recent game, 5-0 straight up, 4-0 uh, 
and won AT, 4 and 0 ATS in their line games. There was one game that wasn't line, but look at what they're doing. They went outright as big dogs at Fordham. UMass Lowell is really good this year, and they beat them outright as 11 point dogs. Stonehill, they win by 15. St. Francis, PA, they win by 14. Uh, last game out against uh, Merrimack, you know, a I think a pretty one of the better teams in this conference. They win seven. Like, they're on a roll. This is a freight train right now. I ain't stepping in front of the freight train, especially when they've covered a bunch of games in a row like this. Uh, like I said, it's been a struggle for LeMoyne. They've lost uh, their last two uh, against uh, Sacred Heart and Merrimack. We'll see how they fare here. They've never faced each other, these two teams. So we have no you know, past head-to-head history to draw upon. Um, so we'll see how this one plays out. Uh, lean over, but I didn't get involved in it. Pass for me. I am going to take these dolphins. Uh, one thing, and I don't know exactly how I'm going to handle it moving forward, but any spot now, this is big enough for me to just to just back. But any spot where the line hasn't moved from three to five and a half for me that I've moved on, the losses have all come in a very very close game where the team pulls away in the last ninety seconds or so thanks to foul shots and, and things of that nature. All of those spots have covered the first half. So I told myself that from three and a half to six and a half, I would, if there's been no movement, I would just take the team first half moving forward. This is at seven and a half. So it's out of that section that I planned for. So I don't know what exactly I'm going to do. I've not been doubling up on anything in college basketball this year, first half full games. This would be one that I would find appealing. I plan to go full game with the Dolphins. I may go first half as well. I'm still trying to figure out uh, exactly, but I will be on Lemoyne in some factor here. Uh, let's roll on. Next up, 7 p.m. Eastern, Wagner Seahawks. We stay in the Northeast Conference, 8 and 7, 2 and 1 in conference. At the Merrimack Warriors, 99, 3 and 1. We're in North Andover, Massachusetts. Let's take a look at the scenario here. Let me get this all set up. Sorry, it was. Uh, Really trying to focus in on whether I was going to back Lemoyne. Got to think that hopefully these fucking goddamn Blue Devils are not too focused against this bad Lemoyne team. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but I'm going to be moving on Lemoyne in some form or fashion. Let's talk about this Wagner Merrimack spot. Wagner coming off back to back of victories. They won at home. St. Francis, Pennsylvania, they won by 50. Then they beat Stony Hill by 10 on Monday. Merrimack lost that very tight game at uh, Central Connecticut, 75-70. They had a three-game winning streak going on, a similar rest advantage. Uh, is Merrimack an angry group that wants to bounce back? Now, they didn't play that poorly, uh, but they did take the L. When we look at the line history, Merrimack seven-point favorites here. Uh, they opened up as five and a half point favorites. It's moved a point and a half in their direction. And this line's been all over the place. So this came out yesterday, 1.37 p.m. Uh, by 6.20 p.m., it was at seven. At midnight, this dropped to four and a half. Then it gets back up to seven and a half at 10 in the morning. These wild swings when there's U-shaped movement like that makes me really uncomfortable. I, I, I like I much, much prefer just a kind of solid move in, in one direction uh, or a tiny bit of buyback at the end. You know, I can explain that. When we see moves that are this uh, extreme, uh, it makes me very, very nervous as if there's information that others have that we don't. Uh, this total opened up very low, 123 and a half. It's now at 124 and a half, but it's really a 124. It's juiced heavily to the under at minus 119. And then when we get into the cash flow uh, for this spot, you have 70% of the tickets and 99% of the cash on Merrimack. Wow, 99. And there was all that buyback at one point. 57% tickets, 58% cash on the over. Take it away for us here, Bobano. NEC action, Seahawks, Warriors. Yeah, uh, you know what's interesting here is uh, these are two slow-paced teams. Um, two pretty, they can be good defensive teams, uh, Wagner and Merrimack. Um, Wagner's better, a little bit better defensively than offensively. Uh, Merrimack certainly is very good defensively and they can struggle to shoot the ball. There's no question about that, but suddenly here's Merrimack two of their last three games have gotten into the one thirties, one forties, and they're shooting the ball better. Merrimack, their defense has kind of fallen a little bit when I look at that. So 
I think that's something you've got to note of. Short-term results matter. Over the course of the season, this has been a, a team that uh, Merrimack, they've trended under. So has Wagner. Merrimack lately, you know, you've seen their offense improve, their defense fall just a little bit. Then on the flip side, you got Wagner. We've seen their offense kind of uptick here. You know, 67, 71, 64, the last few games is very good for them because there's been games this year they've been held into the 50s against a lot of their teams. So we've seen their game pick up a little bit as far as shooting is concerned. So I'm going to take a shot that this total is just a little bit light. A little bit light given the uh, recent form uptick offensively. Uh, we're short on time. We want to get LJ in here. So uh, I'll just cut it off at that and say I like over uh, here with uh, Wagner and uh, Merrimack in this game. And you can find that at over 123 and a half minus 104 at FanDuel. You got it. Wagner, Merrimack over 123 and a half at minus 104. We're going to move on to the next spot in the NEC. Just want to answer Kyle Hintley's question. I can't believe we're going to get to hang out with Kyle in San Antonio for Pub Palooza. It's, you know, I can't wait, Kyle, man. Uh, it's been too long. I can't wait. We finally get and Kyle's to a big Ice Guys viewer, too. So that would be uh, great to finally meet him. I haven't. Oh, wouldn't yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. And um, so for uh, Kyle, very important question. He says, uh, how do we bet in Texas? Because it's not legalized sports gambling. Uh, bet online. That's the book we all use. We all hammer bet online. Bet US you can use as well in Texas. But uh, the, I, my first bet online foray was just so that I could make sure that I could live bet with the squad in our year one uh, at uh at Papa Palooza. So it is uh Bet Online is our is the book, Bet US too, but uh Bet Online. And if you don't have an account on with Bet Online, you can use my bookie as well. We have the uh the, the link with my bookie, but with Bet Online, we got the hundred percent bonus up to a thousand dollars if it's a brand new account. So it's Bet Online is the main one for us to to gamble with. Uh yeah, it's gonna be glorious. So let's roll on. 7 p.m. Eastern Long Island University Sharks 3 and 12, 2 and 1 in the NEC at St. Francis, Pennsylvania, Red Flash 5 and 12 have yet to win. Uh, in the NEC. We're in Loretta, Pennsylvania for this one. We have Long Island had one back-to-back -back games. You know, beat Wagner at home, uh, then beat Stone Hill. Uh, they're coming off a horrific performance. Uh, just a horrific performance at Sacred Heart. Uh, they looked atrocious. Uh, they gave up. Uh, they allowed 51 points in the second half. Um, and, that, you know, they lose by 34 as seven and a half point dogs. So then the question is, are they going to show some character and bounce back against an angry St. Francis team that's lost four straight? And the last two have come at home. And the last two have come at home, you know, against fairly Dickinson uh, in Central Connecticut, two strong teams in the conference. So they've lost four straight. Uh, they lost to Central Connecticut on Saturday and then fairly Dickinson on Monday. And Long Island is an angry team. I mean, uh, we'll have to hear from Bobano if he thinks this is the type of team that's able, capable of bouncing back from an atrocious situation, or maybe they're just a heartless group because that's what they look like in the second half of that basketball game. We have St. Francis opening up at minus two. They're now minus four, a two-point move towards St. Francis. And then from a total scenario, we're dealing with a 144 and a half, minus 117 to the over. This has come up from 140 and a half. We have a four-point move, and it's juiced to the over. Then when we take a look at the cash flow uh, for this spot, we have 55% of tickets and 96% of cash on the over. 56 and 96 in the books caring about this action, moving in the direction. Then 87% of tickets and 98% of cash on St. Francis, and the books are moving that in their direction. This is a wild one. Uh, take it away for us here, Long Island University Sharks at St. Francis, Red Flash, and Loretto Bobano. Yeah, this is a, an interesting one. I agree with the total move. I mean, I, th I thought this was very light. Now, I know there's been two unders for LIU, and uh, we've seen uh, St. Francis PA, two of their last three have gone under, but longer term, five and two to the over in their last seven. And more importantly, you know, LIU is going to push pace. And, you know, LIU was able to score 82 uh, against uh, St. Francis in the first meeting last year. And then here at home, though, St. Francis PA put up an 87 spot. And you look at defensive efficiency in the conference, LIU, uh, Long Island's just seventh. St. Francis PA is dead last, okay, ninth uh, in this conference. There's nine teams in the Northeast Conference. They're ninth uh, in defensive efficiency. So I thought this total was very light. Both meetings last year, 87-68, uh, 155 points scored in that game and then the second meeting was 93 82 you know we saw 175 uh on the board in the second meeting so to me this just looked very very light at 142 and a half 
I'm not surprised to see it go up. So over 144 and a half minus 110 DraftKings for me here. Over 144 and a half at minus 110. Let's roll on. So we have left the Northeast Conference. So all we have left, four games, two in the MAC, one in the Big Ten, and we close off with the D-Gen special in the Mountain West. So let's move on. Let's move on. The next spot on the board is Toledo Central Michigan in the good old Mac, baby. Toledo Rocket Central Michigan uh, Chippewas. Toledo rolling and playing very good basketball. Them and Akron are both undefeated atop the Mid-American Conference standings. Coming off an 11-point victory over Buffalo. Came on the heels of a 5-point victory over Ball State. Uh, they're playing good basketball. Uh, Central Michigan Chippewas had their winning streak snapped at Ohio in a 73-61 loss on Tuesday. Both teams played on Tuesday, and uh, they lost at Ohio as, uh, you know, as 10-and-a-half-point dogs. So, you know, no shame in that. Uh, they they fought hard. They, they were down early, and they couldn't really mount any type of comeback. So the chips coming off that loss. Both teams playing on Tuesday in Toledo in the throes of a juicy winning streak. Let's get into the side here for – this one and then the cash and hand it over. So this is uh, also our final 7 p.m. basketball game, I believe. No, I think we have one more. Sorry, sorry, we have one more. So here we go. Toledo right now, seven and a half point favorites at home. They open at six, a one and a half point move in their direction. From a total scenario here, we have a 148 and a half at minus 115. I just opened up a 148. It got up to 149, still a half point move to the over. And then and a one and a half point move to Toledo. And then when we look at the cash flow here for this one, we've got 72% of the tickets and 96% of the cash on Toledo, the line moving in their direction. And from a total look, we have 93% of the tickets on the over. We don't know uh, anything about the cash flow. So let's roll. Take it away for us here, Bobano. Rockets, chips. Yeah, this is one where um, it's tough to go against Toledo right now. It really is. They're playing uh, excellent basketball. They've won five straight. Uh, now, they've only covered two of those games. Uh, it's worth noting. And uh, on the road, actually, believe it or not, they've been better. They've actually failed to cover their last three home games. But look what they've done here on the road in MAC play. They beat Kent State as a dog by 14. That's a pretty good Kent State team. And then they beat Ohio outright as a dog by nine. So they've actually played even better away from home here, this uh, Toledo team. So I understand why the uh, betting markets are interested in looking toward the uh, Rockets here. Central Michigan. Up and down, you know, not a great team, inconsistent, mediocre. Uh, they have been, they have stepped up at times at home. Like that Kent State win was very good, 77-62, but they also lost by as favorites to a Buffalo team that's not anywhere close to as good as they've been in the past. So uh, just a lot of inconsistency from the Chippewas. Eileen Toledo, but I, I'm going to stay off. We'll roll right into our next spot, then stay in the MAC, 7 p.m. Eastern. Akron zips 13 and 4, 5 and 0 in conference at Kent State. Golden Flashes 9 and 8, 2 and 3 in conference. We are in fabulous Kent, Ohio for this one. So I got Toledo up here. Uh, let's take a look at the line history here for this one. Why is it not? Uh, here we go, uh, way up here. We are at a pick them now at Bet Online. Uh, this opened up with Akron as one point favorites. That's where you'll see across the market. But this moved to a pick them. Uh, it actually moved to a pick them after midnight. Uh, it just didn't, it stayed there. So um, a very slight one point move uh, towards the zips. From a total scenario here, we have. Oh, it's up here. My bad. Up here. We're seeing a 143 a minus 115 to the over. It opened up at 142 and a half. So we have a half point move towards the over. Cash flow for this one. We have come on, where are you? Akron. Sorry. It's not that many games up. It shouldn't take long. It didn't, it doesn't. 71% of the tickets on the over, but just 51% of the cash. And then 33% of the tickets and 64% of the cash on Kent State. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Kent State coming off, snapping their three-game losing streak with an 83-76 win at Northern Illinois on Tuesday to come back home for this one. And Akron just winning basketball games. Uh, that's what they're doing. We just talked about them and Toledo being on top of the Mid-American. And they're coming off uh, two home wins. They beat Buffalo 76-59, and then they beat Western Michigan on Tuesday 77-66. So we go back to their last road game. Their last road game was at Ball State, and they won that uh, – 
80-76 on the road, and they were seven-and-a-half-point favorites. An interesting spot here. Uh, this is our final MAC game. We have two games left after this one. Take it away, Akron, Kent State. Yeah, I like the surging road team here, actually, Akron. Now, I know Akron lost at Kent State last year, and they lost, more importantly, in the MAC Conference Tournament to Kent mm -hmm. State last year. Tournament revenge. I like it. And I think this Akron team is very, very good this year. I love what I see. I think they're playing some excellent basketball right now, uh, and they are taking care of business. Like, they're woodshed beating down teams, Western Michigan, Buffalo. Uh, the only one that was relatively close was Ball State. They beat the hell out of Bowling Green and Northern Illinois as well. No, I like what I'm seeing here from Akron right now and uh, an ability to beat the team that ended your NCAA tournament hopes last year, uh, go on the road, and knowing you lost to them twice last year as well. And I think Akron's just the better of these two teams. I just talked about it a minute ago with the Toledo game that when they beat Kent State, Kent State's not nearly as good this year. And then the more I watch them, I haven't been as impressed uh, with this Golden Flashes team. Uh, when you look at Akron, uh, and you look at the statistics inside the MAC. You've got an Akron team that stands up right now as um, better offensively than Kent State, and they're the number one defensive efficiency in the uh, MAC. Uh, Akron zips, whereas Kent State's fallen all the way to ninth uh, out of twelve MAC teams as far as defensive efficiency. So you've got Akron, the better offensive team in conference play, and the better defensive team in conference play, playing with double revenge, including getting knocked out of the conference tournament. We know this team's capable of winning on the road. They've shown it uh, here already in conference play. I will take Akron plus one and a half, minus 110 at Bet Rivers, and I will also grab this over. I think the total's a little light, over 141 and a half, minus 118 at FanDuel. Over 141 and a half at minus 119. And then what did, sorry, what did you get Akron at? Plus one and a half, minus 110, Pet Rivers. Plus one and a half, minus 110. So Bobano, side and total for a big one in the MAC. All right, let's head to the big one on tonight's. Well, there's two, and they're the next two games. 8.30 p.m. Eastern, Indiana Hoosiers, 12 and 6, 4 and 3 in the Big Ten. At the number 11th ranked, Wisconsin Badgers, 13 and 4, 5 and 1 in the Big Ten. By the way, all those games that we just got, 13 of them, are all at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's just going to be popping off. We all know how much fun that feeling is. 7 p.m. Friday, and we have all this action. Can we not stagger off. these start times? I mean, it's a little ridiculous. Come on. <laughs> I know. I know. But I kind of like it. I kind of like the, the madness of it all. Uh, Indiana coming off that 87-66 loss at home to Purdue. Uh, that came on the heels of the uh, win over Minnesota. And here, that I believe that Minnesota win was last Friday with us together where we were all on it. I believe, but I'll have to double check that. Uh, here, though, they lose badly to Purdue. They got just demolished early. Purdue was nine and a half point favorites, and they were up 22 at halftime. So it was a pretty ugly display by Indiana against the best team in the nation. And then Wisconsin having their winning streak snap at Penn State, 87 uh, 83. Uh, they were five and a half point favorites, uh, Whiskey was. And and they, you know, won the rebound battle, but lost the turnover war and lost the game 87 uh, 83 as five and a half point favorites to a, to a pretty weak Penn State squad. So that's the situation here. And yes, that Indiana win we were on was at home versus Minnesota uh, last Friday. Then they come back on Tuesday. Both teams played on Tuesday. So we have a very similar rest advantage here. And you can imagine that uh, Wisconsin is an angry group and Indiana also an angry group from an embarrassing loss. So let's take a look at the line history here for this one. This is the big one tonight. Wisconsin 11-point favorites right now. They opened up at 11, uh, went down to 10.5, back to 11. They're sitting at 11.5 right now, so a half-point move uh, towards Wisconsin. Now that half-point is a little more than it looks because it's minus 120 towards Wisconsin. So that I think they're the most juice spot of, of these books out there. From a total scenario here, we have it sitting at a 141. And this opened up at 144 and a half. So we have a three and a half point drop to the wards, the under. And then cash wise, 70% of the ticket, 67% of the cash on Wisconsin. Line's not really moving. From a total side of things here, we have it sitting at 
with 76% of tickets and 91% cash on the under in the big move towards the under. Take it away for us here, Bobano. Second to last game on the board. Uh, Robert Martin says bounce back win for the Badgers. That's fine, but is it going to be a double-digit bounce back win? Take it away for us, Hoosiers, Badgers in Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm off this game. I mean, I, I, I don't trust Indiana on the road. I don't. I, uh, the last two times, you know, I, I actually took them at, at Nebraska. They got walloped. 86 70 and I and then when they pl- the good news is I learned from my mistake they played at Rutgers the next road game and I'm like I'm going to lay the points with Rutgers and Rutgers won and covered by nine uh hosting India Indiana's just not been this trustworthy uh on the road um at home they've been capable they beat Minnesota they beat Ohio State you know that's where I want to take Indiana or would consider it is that assembly get them on the road I'm not interested and also, too, stepping up in class has been an issue. Like they were able to beat Minnesota and an inconsistent Ohio State team, but they played Purdue. They got destroyed at home earlier this week. They lost at Nebraska by a big margin. Auburn destroyed them. And I'm not saying Wisconsin's phenomenal, but uh, they're off that loss at Penn State. They're back home here in Madison, and their, their home record's been pretty solid. They won and covered against Nebraska and Iowa on this home court and Northwestern as well in their last home game. So, Feels like Wisconsin definitely wins this game. Indiana not been good on the road, but I don't want to lay 11 either. I could see it being somewhat close to the number, but I don't trust Indiana enough. So pass for me. I'm interested in in Indiana here. Uh, The other spots that we've spoken about, I'm going to be moving on. But this one, uh, I don't know if I'm going to pull the trigger. Coach Minton in the house says uh, he's on the over in Niagara, Kent State, and the under in Maris, L-I-U. And uh, Billy Friedrich saying Perky Bumps can win a 10K parlay. Uh, can, we, can we help him out and talk about the hedge? Uh, yeah, uh, I, sorry, we're multitasking here, but uh, Perky, what are the two bets that you have left that you need to cash the 10K uh, at this point? That's what I would need to know. It's the, the trickier factor is that there's two bets, not one. So uh, l- let us know what those two bets are here for the 10k so we can see if we can help let's move on to the final spot on the board excellent job bobana we have nba next seven games on the slate and we have one final game here and we head over to the mountain west and it's hard to even say the words mountain west without thinking of our good friend dj big boss man i hope he's in san antonio with us a big boss probably in the pool just like that with seniors all over him uh and in the mountain west It's where he does it best. This is his uh, spot to shine. So this is a great spot for all of us gamblers to the 10.30 p.m. Eastern game, 7.30 on the West Coast, the late spot for us. UNLV Rebels at Colorado State Rams and no longer ranked Colorado State Rams after the Utah State loss. And then they followed it up with the Boise loss. Those are single-digit losses. Then they needed overtime to get past Air Force on Tuesday. UNLV then goes, so the UNLV loses at home to Utah State. So we have similar competition here. Loses at home to Utah State and then comes back and beats Boise uh, at Boise 68-64 on Tuesday. A very impressive road game. And now they have back-to-back road games against what you could say all of a sudden is an underachieving Colorado State team. So uh, now they would look great to start the year. Don't get me wrong. That's where we stand right now. Let's take a look at the line history here. We have Colorado State minus 7 and minus 115. They opened up at 7.5, quickly went to 6.5, bouncing all over the place. But there has been a half-point move to UNLV, and at times there's been a one-point move. But a half-point move right now towards UNLV to 7, and the total is sitting at 143, minus 120 to the over. It opened up at 145.5. And And then when we get to the cash flow here for our final spot on the board, you have 84% of tickets and 93% of the cash on Colorado State. All this money on Colorado State, all of this thought on Colorado State, and yet, and yet, this line has moved a half point in the opposite direction, which obviously makes UNLV very appealing. Only 7% of tickets have come in on the under, but 23% of the cash has 93 on the over and 77 uh, cash. Final spot on the board, my friend. Take it away, UNLV, Colorado State. I've been very, very um, disappointed lately, a little, at least a little bit you know, by Colorado State. Um, you know, there's been a couple of games where, you know, at Utah State, I thought they could win that. Certainly against Boise, a bounce-back spot, and uh, it was not a bounce-back spot for them. They lost to uh, Boise as well, back-to-back losses. Uh, they, they are pretty good at here at home uh, at Fort Collins. They beat New Mexico 76-68. Uh, 
Uh, they did win their last home game against Air Force, but not enough to cover the big number there, 78-69. We'll see how they fare here in this one. The money's come in on Colorado State. Yeah, I, I don't really want to go against them at home, but I, I will say this. I'm reluctant to go against UNLV getting all these points. I mean, UNLV, um, you know, when you look at it, they beat Boise on the road, 68-64, outright as dogs. Um, nearly beat a very good Utah State team at home, uh, beat New Mexico at home. This team's playing some good basketball right now, uh, UNLV. Uh, they've covered three straight. I like what I see in that regard. Uh, so this game's a little bit tricky for me from a side perspective, but it's not tricky for a total. Uh, I like over. Uh, I think there'll be points here. Uh, we saw 163 uh, in UNLV last year between these two teams. Last year here in Fort Collins, it was uh, 154 points. It ended up going uh, over the total as well. I'm just a more than a little bit surprised this total's this low uh, in this game. I had this closer to the mid to high 140s for a total, not where we are here at around, I'm seeing 143 and a half right now, minus 110 at Pinnacle. So I will absolutely jump on that here. Uh, over 143 and a half, minus 110 at Pinnacle for UNLV Colorado State. It's fascinating. Uh, the uh, DC Capra on Colorado State minus seven. Robert Martin on Colorado State minus seven. Justin McKelvey on Colorado State. Robert Martin saying Colorado State uh, minus seven is is free money. We look at the cash flow here, and we have, you know. What is the exact number? Oh, sorry about that. I pressed the wrong button. The exact number is we have, oh God, sorry, we have uh, 84% of tickets, 93% of cash on Colorado State, and this moved a half point towards UNLV. Uh, do I really think that a 9-7 and seven team going up against a 14-3 and three spot in Fort Collins is going to look past it just because they upset Boise State? Uh, and my answer is no. Uh, and then seeing everybody here on Colorado State, not saying that you're wrong or anything, but that's exactly what we're getting from the information that from the books is that every capper is going up and betting a Colorado State, and yet we've moved a half point or a one full point towards UNLV. I'm going to be on the Rebels here. I'm going I'm to fade the public in this spot. So all let's right. review all action here on the show. Taint play of the day, Quinnipiac minus four and a half, minus four and a half. And uh, oh, Colorado State no longer ranked, uh, Robert, That's as far as I know. I thought they were no longer ranked. but uh, So uh, let's go over action again. Uh, Bobano's on the Hoyas plus 12 and a half. I'm going to roll with him on that. He's also on the over 148 and a half. Uh, in that one, he's on the St. Louis Billikens plus eight and a half. I'm going to roll with him on that one. He's on the over 148 in Quinnipiac, Siena. He's on the over 144 in Niagara Rider and Niagara plus three and a half. I'm going to roll with him on Niagara. He is on the over 132 and a half minus 110 in Maris plus three and a half. Joe T's also on the over. I'm going heads up with him on that one. I'm on Mount St. Mary's at home. Boban is on the over 134 and a half. Jay Smooth, Smooth Balls play of the day is the over 130. Four and a half. And Joe T says his best bet is this over in this one as well. It's also Akron Kent is his second favorite over. Bobano's on Canisius plus eight and a half in the over 144 and a half. I'm going to be on Lemoyne. The question is, do I do it full game or first half? That's the only thing I'm going to figure out. And I'm not doubling up. Bobano's on the over 123 and a half in Wagner Merrimack. Bobano's on the over 40. Oh, 144 and a half in Long Island, St. Francis. Toledo, Central Michigan, we stayed off. Uh, then Bobano's on the Akron, Kent State over, and that was another spot that Joe T was on. He's on Akron plus one and a half and the over 141 and a half. I have interest in Indiana Hoosiers. I don't know. I've got to spend more time with that spot after the show. And then UNLV, I will be on. Bobano's on the over 143 and a half. Shout out to our guy, North Ender, gifting a pub sports radio membership. North Ender, you are a good man. Thank you. And great to see BJ get it. Love you guys. Uh, thank you so much for your support of the channel. And Bobano, thank you for your support and hard work. Bobano did a masterful job last Friday and put him right in position to get into the black in college basketball and NHL. Uh, last Friday, he went 12 and 8 plus 5.24 units, and he's all over this card. Thank you for your guidance and leadership, my man. Get that cash. We get to see Bobano tomorrow for NFL Pub Hub. Tomorrow, play, hitting leadoff as he's done all year, our season two champion. They do want to know, and it's up to you. You don't need to, but they all do want to know if you do have a little, uh, little taste 
little taste for the – is there a best bet? Or is there something you like more than anything else on tomorrow's uh, weekend NFL slate? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, by the way, I'm I'm going to join you, Jimmy. I'm, I'm adding something in the NHL. I'm going to join you on Columbus plus one thirty six. Uh, I'm going to add that because I believe I'm reading now that it hasn't been confirmed, but likely with the back to back for New Jersey, Dallas tomorrow, Columbus tonight, they're rolling with Vanacek. It sounds like tonight, and Nico Dawes tomorrow. And you know my thoughts on Vanacek. I'm not liking anything I'm seeing out of that guy right now uh, in net. So. Uh, plus 136, I will add that with Columbus. For tomorrow, I mean, I don't want to give too much away if I'm going to be on the NFL Pub Hub, but I do want to taste. I'll mention something for sure. A little taste? A little taste. Um, it's probably my favorite total on the board. Um, Green Bay, San Francisco over. Uh, I think the Niners are going to put up a big number. They'll run all over that Green Bay defense because the Green Bay run defense is still not good. Let's not forget last week. They were down so big, Dallas, they could uh, they had to abandon Tony Pollard in any semblance of the run game uh, in that game against Green Bay. Uh, McCaffrey, you know, assuming that calf hold is, is in decent shape, you know, going into this game, the rest should help them. The bye week should have helped that. Uh, I think they'll be able to run the ball six, and that will open everything up for uh, – Brock Purdy and the off and the passing game to Kittle over the middle to Ayuk and to uh, uh, Debo uh, down the field. So uh, I think San Fran's going to put up a lot of. I like the team total over in that game for the Niners as well. But uh, I like I think Green Bay is going to move the ball as well because I'm a little leery of that secondary still for for San Francisco and what I've seen from Love and what I've seen from some of these young receivers stepping up for Green Bay. I think they can probably move the football as well. So. For a pick for the NFL games tomorrow that I probably like the most, I will go with over 50 at Pinnacle, minus 110, Green Bay, San Francisco. And you probably write that down as an official play for me already for NFL pub up tomorrow. I love it. The over in Green Bay, San Francisco game. I did the very last thing I did last night before I went to sleep, and maybe this – a foolish at the number, but I did put 500 on the Niners at minus 190 to win the NFC. Uh, and I got the f 500 on the double result tomorrow. And that's my only action on the Niners situation right now. So Doesn't Joe uh, Barry versus Kyle Shanahan, especially Shanahan with extra time to prepare as far as that Niners offense versus Packers defense matchup. Doesn't that seem like kind of a mismatch kind of kind I, of does to me. I don't know. That's was one of the topics that we talked about. How does Joe Barry possibly compete now? And I don't mean to sell him too short, but uh, it's a, Shanny, Joe Barry, I mean, God, I can't wait for it. I, I really like San Francisco, for if you can get it, first drive of the game. or Whenever San Francisco has the ball for the first time, bet touchdown. I really think they're going to go down the field and get a touchdown. I just do. I got that feel. The scripted plays with Shanahan are superb, uh, and the extra time against a, a defense that I don't love in Green Bay that uh, and uh, a, a much tougher matchup than Dallas, who choked. Yeah, I like that, too. I love it. I love it, my man. Thank you for rolling with us. Let's get that cash. I will see you tomorrow, my friend. Keep up the great work. Uh, let's get hot. I've been watching you heating up on, on our show, both on PubHub and here. So keep it up, my man. Uh, and please uh, let everybody know everyone's been trying to find you on X. So what's going on? Can you let us know? Yeah, let's update. Uh, just look, I have no personal Twitter X accounts right now. One was taken over by a hacker, the original one, Apple Bano. So don't use that. Don't respond to anything from that. I'm locked out of it. I'm trying to get access back into it. I've sent a form about it into the Twitter X. Hopefully they can do something about this for me, but it's going to take, they said, a, a, maybe a week or two. So I'm holding out hope I get that one back. I started a new one at Bobano Betting, and it's since been suspended, saying violation of, I don't know what, violation of policies, and they're not restoring it. So I've lost that one. I'm hoping to get the original one back. In the meantime, you can follow at the underscore ice guys and all of my personal tweets will be marked with Ian and brackets from that account. That's where I will be uh, for the next uh, you know week or two until hopefully I get my original one back. So at the underscore ice guys, follow me there for now. Uh, you did get, I was so concerned about what was happening to you. I did put up my two thing verification, two way verification or whatever on yesterday. I was like, Oh God, uh, I hope we get it fixed for you, my man. Hope we get it fixed for you. Uh, hate hearing that. But we love you, Bobano. Go out there and get that cash. Please support him over at the Ice Guys and with everything that he does here for us on Pop Sports Radio. Uh, any last words for the Capri supporting the show? Great stuff. Always fun with you on Fridays. Good luck, Jimmy, to you and everyone in the chat this weekend. Let's make money. Have a great weekend.
There he is, Bo Bannum in effect. We move on to NBA. We're having some issues here with LJ's uh, internet it's going in and out, so he's being back and forth uh, backstage. I'm sure he's going to be here uh, backstage uh, shortly uh, and work it again. Uh, don't forget, though, we have our $100 draw at the end of these seven games that we're going to break down in NBA. So, uh, we have our $100 draw there, 100 bucks up for grabs. We're going to do $50 draws every Wednesday and Friday, but I won yesterday, so I'm just carrying the money over for today. Uh, that will be popping off at the end of this. And also, don't forget, those of you in the confidence pool, led by Uncle Jay right now, Johnny Yim, 32 of us, we've given back the money for the three people who two didn't enter picks but paid and one didn't put in the confidence picks. We've sent back the money. There's 32 of us. Uh, every cent except for the $2.50 that it charges us when we get the credit card and, the, and all that, the, the fees, every other um, every other cent is in here. So those are the top three payouts, 9, 12, 4, 56, 152. Don't forget, the picks lock Friday at midnight. And it's interesting that Dan wants it to lock it, kick off. We'll discuss that with everybody because we want to do what's what people like the most. But I do uh, like getting to see everybody's action Friday at midnight, and that's the point of it. So, um, But let's get right into NBA, and we have our star of Fridays in business. And, you know, adversity is what our next guest is dealing with, but it's just because of the sample size of only Fridays going on his NBA record. There was a Friday that, uh, because of scheduling purposes, and we had a really tight show that we couldn't have uh, LJ on, and that day he went 11-0. and on last call with Mikey Money. So that's not part of his record. Uh, he was in a tough spot. And then last week, he goes 7-0 and on sides and totals. Now, 0-3 in player props. But I truly believe this man has no concern with the adversity ahead of him. He's proven that he beats the NBA year after year. And we'll do the same here. So he's coming off of an impressive Friday performance last week. Uh, 7 and 3 plus 3.86 units. Again, 7 and 0 plus 7 units and sides and totals. And we're going to watch him climb into the black. And one of the tricky things, uh, you know, they... When I first started doing this publicly, the manager that I had at the time said, no, you don't, you can't put out your records. He goes, what if you lose? He's like, no, you guys can't put out your records. And I was like, no, we'd like to be on, we'd like to honestly show that we can see. And he's like, no, no. We had to push, 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 push. Because what happens if you're down? And the cappers are so good that I work with that I know they're going to climb out. And that's what you're going to see from our next guest. Coming to us live from Houston, Texas. Star of the Trill OG play of the day. Please welcome our guy. Mr. LJ from H-Town. Pub Sports Radio's the crew, that's a fact. We all about bread, make your bank accounts fat. Who the hell is that? LJ from the H, I stack green like Boston. Shout out to Nasty Nate from down south, where we ride on slabs. 420 highway smoking with that boy Dabby Cab. Swing by Dallas with them cowboy fans so we can smoke out J Money, cause you know that's our mans. Us against the bookies, put money in our pockets. Fly out to Vegas, meet up with Ski Profit. Hit the sports books, we got money to stack. Can't forget them college picks with that boy Connor Mack. LJ, what's good, my man? Happy Friday to you. How are you? I'm doing great, Jimmy. Happy Friday to you, too, as well. You know I love capping these NBA cards with you on Friday. Uh, I moved on a couple spots already, but I'm looking at some more interesting spots as well. So hopefully we can talk it out and we can get some money. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. We start at 7 p.m. Eastern, and our guy BJ jumps in the chat and tells us he's max betting the Charlotte Hornets money line. Let's get that mm. thing rolling into this Spurs Hornets spot. Spurs 7 and 33, 4 and 17 on the road at the Hornets 8 and 34 and 13 at home. We're at the Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. Sacramento, uh, Sa San Antonio, excuse me, 2 and 3 over their past five, playing the third fastest pace in the NBA over that stretch. 102 possessions a game, hitting 45.3 from the field, but 33.7% from three. Charlotte, of course, in the throes of yet another losing streak. 0 oh and 5 uh, in their last five. Sorry, Ella, I'm working. Okay, don't answer it. Okay, okay, uh, don't. Okay, give me, give me a couple minutes. Sorry, it's a professional day. Uh, Spurs come in off their third straight loss, one seventeen ninety eight setback at Boston on Wednesday night, and this is game three of a five game road trip. On the other hand, Charlotte zero and five over the past five, playing at the twenty fourth fastest pace, ninety six point seven eight possessions game, thirty nine point three percent from the field, and thirty six percent from three. Let's talk about 
the line history and the cash flow here. Line history wise, we're going to go back to Pinnacle for openers. We have San Antonio a plus four as the opener. They're now plus four and a half from a total side of things here. We have a two. 35 and a half minus 113 to the over opened up at 237 has dropped a point and a half to 235 and a half when we get into the cash flow here we have 82 percent of the tickets and 94 percent of the cash on the charlotte hornets 82 and 94 and what a half point move towards them good god from a total side of things here 50 50 on the tickets but 98 percent of the cash is on the under Hi. 98% of the cash on the under and we've gone from 237 down to 235. So there has been a point and a half move towards the under. Wow, Sammy Calmer in the house. Great to see you, Sammy. So uh let's set this up. Spurs come in off their third straight loss, 117.98 at Boston on Wednesday. That's their lowest output offensively in their last 13 games. Vassal, though, showed something. We haven't seen anything from him in a while. 21 points in Boston. He had a total of 21 points in his previous three. This game three, the five-game road trip. Hornets coming off their sixth straight loss, 132-112 at New Orleans. And all of these losses, except for one, have come by at least 13 points. You know, they haven't won at home since December 8th. That's how long. <laughs> December 8th. It's January 19th. They won home since December 18th against Raptors. Uh, their only victory over their last 18 games came at Sacramento on Jan 2nd. So now you could say, well, LaMelo Ball is back. We lost. He missed 20 games. He went for 29 points in his return against the Pelicans. So this is La uh, LaMelo Ball's first home game since November 22nd. Uh, uh, in that game, he racked up 34 points. Uh, and then the Spurs smash and grabbed. The Hornets just last Friday in San Antonio. So there's Rebenga involved here. I have to make sure everything's okay here for a second. I'll just be right back. Uh, but take it away. I will be listening. We have Spurs, Hornets, LJ. Yes, sir. Yeah, Spurs and Hornets. As we all know, this is pretty much a bum fight for the most part. Jimmy loves these bum fights. So maybe yes, he, he can find some in this game. Yes, <laughs> but as far as me... I'm not going to find anything. I'm not going to bet on bottom tier teams. That's just not what I like to invest in. But, hey, I'll give you the numbers. Hornets 1-7 in their last eight straight up. Spurs 2-6 in their last eight straight up. So they've been on losing streaks. 2-8 and eight against the spread last 10 for the Charlotte Hornets as well. Jimmy just mentioned that they haven't won a home game, you know, since last month. They're allowing 122 points the last five games. They're 0-4 at home versus the West. I mean – Hornets are really now. They have LaMelo Ball back. I mean, I don't know how much that's going to count for his wins or against the spread, but if you just want to look at his props specifically, you make it get some money because he's averaging 26, 6, and 6 since he's came back to the lineup. He's also had two plus steals in all three games when he's come back. So those are some things you can look at just to get some side props. But as far as a side, I can't bet on anything. Spurs have been on the road so long, six road games in their last nine. They have two more road games as well coming up. Wembley's out of the lineup, so one and seven on the road versus the East. Just nothing that I saw to get any money in this game, so I am definitely going to pass. We have a pass in this one. Look, I get the whole idea that you know Charlotte's better, obviously, with Lamelo, and the Spurs destroyed them, and now the Hornets come back home. Look, I get those angles. Those angles make sense to me, uh, but to sit here with you know, all of this money on the Hornets and the line not showing any, or the market, the books not showing any indication of fear. 82%. Yeah. That, that's just, that is not appealing. Uh, from an exit low standpoint, I completely understand it. But from a, you know, and then when we go to look at Nutflush Island, he says, you know what we do in this game. So what Nutflush wants to do is he wants to take the team total against anybody playing the Spurs, and he's been banking, banking off of it. <laughs> so I, I, I get that. Yeah. Get that. And Jose getting a lot of love, as he should, as he should. Okay, so uh, we are off. Best bet from BJ. And then I need to what Nutflush is planned here because it's just been uh, banking here, and that would be, of course, the Hornets team total over. All right, we're going to roll – on. Uh, next up for us, 7 p.m. Eastern, Philadelphia 76ers, 26 and 13, 10 and 7 on the road at Orlando Magic, 22 and 19, 13 and 5 at home. Let's get into the line history here for this spot at the Kia Center in Orlando, Florida. 
uh, from a spread perspective, we are sitting here with the Magic is five and a half point home dogs. They opened up at five, a half point move towards the Sixers. From a total scenario, we're dealing with a 222 and a half. Uh, this uh, has gone up a half point since its opening. Then when we have the cash flow involved, oh, let's see what FanDuel is saying. Uh, Cody Norton says FanDuel is showing 60% uh, of the money on Charlotte on the spread. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, offshores, legit books combined. It's, it's, it's fascinating because obviously that will take you one direction and then hearing that 94% of the cash that's being collected by the Action Network says that it's on Charlotte will take you in a different direction. So it really depends on what you're focusing on. Uh, so and then from a cash flow perspective, 73% of the tickets on the Sixers and 63% of the cash. So there are bigger bets placed on Orlando. Uh, you know, three of every four people moving on the Sixers, and yet this half-point move is all that we see. And total 73% of tickets, 77% cash on the over. No, I love it, Cody. Keep doing it, my man. It's only helpful. All That's all we want as mu much info as possible. So Philly 3-2 and two over their past five, playing at the 21st fastest pace in the NBA, 97.86 possessions a game, shooting 46.1 from the field and 37.9% from three over that period. Orlando 1-4. and four. They're not only playing at the slowest pace in the NBA over these past five games, they're also the worst three-point shooting team in the league over these last five games. 27.6% from three over these last five, 43 from the field. And when you watch Wagner on the bench, Franz Wagner, you tell these guys love him. He's completely involved in every play. He's sitting there like holding his breath, panicking, and moving, like he's just so involved in everything. And they love him. Mosley loves him. The players love him. And he's been out now for seven straight games. Philadelphia comes in off their third straight win, 126-121 at home versus the Nuggets on Tuesday. And Bede, 41 for the second straight game with 10 and 7, 10 assists. <laughs> 18 straight games with at least 30 points to haul, to tie Elgin Baylor. Wow. Hall of Fame. It'll be 19. <laughs> what a monster. So – He's tied for the sixth longest streak in NBA history of 30 each game. Magic coming off their fourth loss in five games, 106-104 at Atlanta on Wednesday. A Bancaro hit the three, you know, to nod it up, but it was mm -hmm. not enough. Take it away for us, LJ Sixers Magic. Yeah, very interesting game here, Jimmy. Um, the Sixers have been at home very, very long time. All, actually, all this month except one game, they've been at home. Now they're about to go on the road, you know, so I want to see how they respond on the road because they haven't been playing well as of late on the road, even with them beat out of that lineup. But interesting enough that they're seven and three against the spread as a road favorite. So that must have been earlier parts of the season when Embiid was playing because it's been slacking ever since he's been in and out of that lineup. But as far as uh, the Magic stacking up against this team, um, the Magic lost to the Sixers the last game, and that was without Embiid on December 27th. So do they respond in this game at home in front of their home crowd? Like y'all already know, Friday nights, I tend to veer towards those teams. But I didn't pull the trigger, and the reason why is because I believe that the Magic need Franz Wagner in that lineup. He averages around 20 points a game. So if you're putting all this pressure on Bacero and these other players to make up those points in that production, I just think it's too much for this young team, especially against a powerhouse like the Sixers who's competing for a championship, and they got the MVP on their roster. So all that said, Jimmy, I am looking at the under, though. I wanted to see what's the best number you can give me with the under 221 because the Magic have been uh, not shooting the ball as of late very well, and I believe if they're not hitting their three-point shots, and they have to struggle to score. I don't believe they can get to their number, and I believe the Sixers could win the game but not necessarily have to score so many points to get the victory. Now, interesting note, um, Magic coming off a four-game road trip, first home game. It's always a phase spot. We always agree on that. But they are 10-1 and at home versus the Eastern Conference. 4-0 at home on Friday. So... Those are trends that y'all know I track, but I didn't get to the window because also the Sixers haven't be back in that lineup. And like you just mentioned, he's on this stupid heroic point streak. And I'm going to be on the over 33 and a half points, Jimmy, minus 115, because he's had 35 plus points seven 
out of his last 10 games. So I don't believe nobody on Orlando will be able to stop and be from getting his points. So I'm just going to focus on that, something that's been hitting consistently. And the Sixers have to show me that they can be the same team that they are at home, that they are on the road. So for that reason, I stayed off. It's an interesting spot with Embiid because we talk about when Pinnacle doesn't want someone to make a bet, they put it a little tiny bit lower, but with crazy juice. That's what they've done with Embiid. He's over 32 and a half at minus 142. Minus 142. Ian Shaver says, we don't have a home crowd. Talking about (laughs) Orlando. Uh, Not sure anyway. uh, Not sure the Amway ticket sales, but Orlando is also a transient city. When New York and Miami show up, jerseys are split. In the arena. Ah. Uh, let's take a look at. I mean, I, I grew up with that my whole life. The reason why I despise the Leafs and the Habs and all that stuff is because they'd come into Vancouver and all the fans would be cheering for it, Montreal or Toronto, and my dad would get in fist fights. Oh, that's just that's what I was. And he just taught me to despise those hockey teams. All right. So here, so I get it. I get the anger that people have when, when the arena is filled with the opposition uh let's see i just want i'm curious to see if we can beat that number over uh anywhere uh and here it's yeah it's over 33 and a half and minus 115 that's what you got as well yeah minus 115 so then if you are interested in the total it's you know either 222 and a half around the minus 107 or 223 at minus 114 Uh, well we'll we'll, we'll, i'll think about it i I, will be back to it once we're done you know and, and i actually you know, speaking of the under in that one with Orlando shooting 27.6% from three and being the slowest paced team mm-hmm. in the NBA over the last five games, I if in the Spurs Hornets game, and I know Nutflesh wanting team totals against the Spurs, but if the Spurs, if the Hornets are going to dictate uh, pace, you know, at home, even though no mm-hmm. one's going to be there, I mean, it'd be half full, but with LaMelo back, then, you know, they're 24 fastest pace in the league i know going up against spurs but if the if they, they get six possessions less a game than the spurs if they dictate the pace you know i would think that the under would be live in that one and it's dropped to 235 and a half mm. 235 and a half so i you know i'm trying to stay away from totals as much as possible but i think the under in that spurs hornets game and in this sixers magic mm-hmm. game is interesting i mean the the magic are gonna it's too bad wagner's in there but the magic are gonna take this as a size up point to see where they stand against the best mm-hmm. team here. Uh, you know, in, well, I shouldn't say in the East, but you know, a very tough team. So, uh, but LJ's moved on Embiid over 33 and a half points. Uh, let's roll on next up for us, 7 30 PM Eastern. This is a big one. Denver Nuggets, 28 and 14, 11 and 10 on the road. Right. Boston Celtics, 32 and nine, 20, you know, at home at TD garden, Boston, Massachusetts. And you know what I've been saying all year is like, you know, Jokic, their team, they're eleven ten on the road. They they want to put that, get that goose egg off of the Celtics at home. And I would reply, Jokic doesn't care. He doesn't <laughs> care what you think is going to happen, and he doesn't care what happens here in Game forty three of the NBA season. Mm-hmm. Jokic cares about getting another ring and then taking care of his horses. That's what he mm-hmm. cares about. He doesn't give a fuck about this game, but. Uh, it's an interesting thought process because some would think that Jokic, it depends how you see Jokic. And I love Jokic, but I don't think that he's like sitting there going, we got to get the Celtics uh, L in the home win-loss call. I'm like, nah, man. Denver 3-2 and two over their past five, playing 18th fastest pace, 98.5 possessions a game, hitting 54.7% from the field. Incredibly impressive. Both teams are hitting beautifully from three. 41.5% for Denver over the last five games, 417 from the Celtics, and both playing at a similar pace. Just two very, very good basketball teams mm-hmm. here. Uh, Gordon, game time decision. The Celtics are healthy and ready to go. You know, in fact, do I think Denver cares about this? No. Do I think Boston nope. does? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, from a side perspective here, we have the Celtics sitting uh, as big favorites. I mean, it's hard to imagine just with well, Gordon game time decision. That's it. That that the Celtics would be seven point favorites at home against, you know, the defending NBA champions. Uh, this is going to point and a half towards the Celtics. I can understand liking it at five or five and a half, but seven is a lot of points against the champs. 
This total is sitting here at 233 and a half. It is juiced to the over. Uh, it opened up at 234. It's dropped a half point to 233. So the main thing is we've had this big move towards the Boston Celtics. Take a look at the cash flow for this one. We have on the total 77% of the tickets and 96% of the cash on the over, but that line's not moving. And then big bets are coming in on the Celtics. 56% of the tickets, but 87% of the cash. And the book's obviously taking notice here. Denver had their two-game winning streak snapped in a, on Tuesday in 126-121 loss at Philadelphia. Jokic 25-19, uh, 11 offensive rebounds. Uh, and that's, I mean... Just the guy's just too impressive, man. Uh, so this is their second game on a five-game road trip. Celtics come in off their third straight win, 117-98 home versus Spurs. 13th team in NBA history to start season 20-0. and And they were without Porzingis, right knee inflammation, and Derek White. Both are back here for this one. Take it away, LJ. Big one on the board. Nuggets, Celtics. Yes, sir. Very, very big game tonight, Jimmy. And I believe everybody knows where I'm going to go with. First of all, let's start with Denver. Five and three straight up in their last nine, but they are four and six against the spread in their last 10 games. Four and six against the spread in their last 10 games on the road, allowing 117 points in their last five games. So Denver has not been playing defense as of late. They've been struggling to stay in games. I saw a little bit of that Sixers game they played a couple of days ago, and even though they were in it, you know, it just never had faith enough to think that they were going to overcome the Sixers because, you know, Embiid was playing MVP caliber ball, and he likes to match over to Jokic. So I guess they wanted to make a statement that night, and I believe the Celtics want to make the same the, uh, statement as well. They're playing the defending champion, so I know how they're going to size up this game. It's probably been circled on their calendar, um, and Denver is 7-14 and 14 against the spread on the road. So horrible record right there. Now, Boston. We already know, 19-0 at home, 7-0 at home on Fridays, ladies and gentlemen, 13-6 against the spread at home, 7-3 against the spread, first quarter, last 10, first half, last 10. So this is where we're going, Jimmy Trill, OG play of the day, Celtics, first half, minus the three and a half, and you can put me on the team total over 120 and a half. Simply because the Celtics are averaging 127 points the last five games, averaging 124 points at home. Not to mention, ladies and gentlemen, do y'all know that the Boston Celtics has shot over 40% from the three-point line, 12 out of the last 16 home games. That's how they score. That's how they jump on these teams. And not to mention, I love the fact how Boston now – can be small and still be tall because you can put Porzingis at the three, at the four, at the five. You can put Tatum at the five, at the four. Like it's so many matchups the Celtics team can do because they're long and they're lengthy and they can cover the perimeter and switch off on defense. So, like I, I mentioned this before, I love the holiday edition. Porzingis, like I mentioned, can shoot the three. Horford's even 6'10, 6'11. So, you can put him in multiple positions as well. But all that said, I'm loving the Celtics tonight. Everybody knows my history of the Celtics. I didn't bet them last year. I just thought that they were too much of a one-trick pony. This year, they're different. I've seen it happen. I've seen them play. So I'm going to invest heavily in the Baltic Celtics this year. And it's going to start tonight, ladies and gentlemen. First half, minus three and a half, trilogy, play of the day. You got it locked in. Also, uh Team total uh, 120 and a half is minus 117 here. Oh, by the way, they've uh, Ricky Bobby found you the Embiid prop five cents cheaper at minus 110. But here, okay, I can get you the first half minus three and a half and minus 110. Uh, the issue here is uh, I have 120 on my book, bet online 120 minus 110. Oh, 120 perfect. and a half, perfect. yeah, perfect. minus 110. Perfect, 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 perfect. And that's a good sign that Pinnacle is taking this uh, over. Uh, Frank says he's a Denver resident Nuggets fan, but he still thinks Celtics swoop in, get the W and the cover. Uh, what do you think of the Celtics first quarter? I, I like it a lot, but I don't like to dibble dabble like that because they could lose it by a bucket. But yet, like I said, come back in that second quarter because like Nasty Nate always says, the second quarter is where Boston gets their money. Even if they're down or if they're, you know, ahead in the first, 
they come smash you in that second quarter. And that's why they're the best team in the first half for the most part, covering a six-point point margin in the first half. That second quarter is when Boston makes his money. I like the first quarter as well, you know, but I'm just going to stick to the first half because I know that's where they've been their best. All right, LJ, Celtics first half minus three and a half, team total over 120 and a half and minus 110. Bo Jackson looking at Celtics first quarter. And Nasty Nate says, I like it. Use the Celtics for the USA Olympic team. That's how much uh, <laughs> believes in his Boston Celtics. We move on. Next up for us, 8 p.m. Eastern, Atlanta Hawks at Miami Heat. We've already heard from Smoke and Tree, Scotty Rock. He's on the Heat minus six and a half. He says Heat minus six and a half is a bag. Hawks, nine and 12 on the road. Heat, 24 and 17, 12 and 7 at home with the Caseya Center in Miami, Florida. Timmy Two Shoes, by the way, on Porzingis, double double at plus 275. Atlanta playing the second fastest pace in the NBA over the last five games. 102.27 possessions a game. They're three and two over that span. 43.9% from the field and 32.9% from three. Not shooting the ball particularly well. Heat three and two over their past five. That does include the debacle at Toronto on Wednesday. Three and two. 94.73 possessions a game. That's 29th fastest in the NBA. Second slowest. 44.7 from the field, 32.9% from three. Very similar shooting numbers to these Hawks. Top set, who is in Miami and follows this team very closely, is on the Heat first quarter, first half to bounce back from the horrific mm-hmm. display in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Take a look at the line history here for this one. Then we'll hand it over to our guy LJ from H Town. Line history wise, we have these Heat. Oh, sorry, that's first half still. Let's not say that out loud. We have the Heat sitting at minus seven. It's minus seven right now, minus seven and minus 106. And this opened up at minus six. So we've had a one point move towards them. And it was a six and a half, then back to six, six and a half, and then seven, and then seven and a half. This was a seven and a half until uh, about 45 minutes ago when it came back to seven. So a clear move towards the heat to bounce back here. From a total scenario, we have a 222 and a half. It's juiced to the uh, under. This opened up at 228. We've gone down five and a half points on this total. And BJ saying no Trey Young. Uh, no Trey Young. We had that information uh, dropped earlier, and I should have said it right off the top. But thank you, BJ. I mean, of course, the total dropped uh, significantly with Trey Young out. Uh, Hunter, uh, DeAndre Hunter out as well. So DeJounte then will be at the one. Bogdanovich at the two. Sadiq Bey at the three. Jalen Johnson at the four. Capella at the five. God. I think you'd be hard pressed not to like that lineup more, uh, <laughs> right. especially defensively. You know, for the Heat, Larry, Hero, Butler, Jovic, and Bam, uh, Robinson and Hawkes are both game time decisions. So, uh, Justin McKelvey looking at Heat minus three and a half first half. Uh, Ian Shaver says he's still on Heroes threes can't stop or won't stop. And Coach Minton says Heat to cover Youngs out for Atlanta. Heat already two and zero against them. Yep. You know, it's interesting that. All we've seen over the last two seasons is teams not having their best player, top players in and cover, yet nobody thinks that's in the cards here. Let's get into the cash flow <laughs> for this spot. Uh, cash flow-wise, uh, 31% of tickets, 30% of cash on Atlanta. And total-wise, 21% of tickets, 51% of cash on the under. Take it away for us here, LJ, Hawks, Heat. Yes, sir. We're going back to the well. I took the first quarter last time I was on the show, Jimmy, and we didn't. No, I took it on Mike's show, I believe. Anyway, um, it didn't hit. You just talked to just mentioned that they had a debacle in, in Toronto. So I'm going back to the well. I'm with them. I'm not on the first half, but I'm back on the first quarter. Minus the two and a half, minus 110 for the Heat. That's where they play their best ball, eight and 10, eight and two against the spread in the first quarter, the last 10 at home. Seven and three against the spread in the first half, the last 10 at home as well. So top set, he got all the numbers for you. Uh, the Heat pretty much owned the Hawks. Uh, they've won eight out of the last 10 games versus the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks are also 5-11 on the road versus the Eastern Conference. <laughs> so, and this is their sixth game in 10 days. So no wonder Trey Young is taking a night off because they probably tired, you know? So all that said, I think the Miami Heat, Take care of business easily tonight. You know, and they got five home games. They had five home games in the last seven games, four and two in that span. So they're playing well right now. They're five and oh at home versus the division. So all the numbers point to me. Heat first quarter. And I'm also going to jump on a prop, Jimmy. 
I'm going to take Kyle Lowry over three and a half assists, minus 122, because my man is averaging four assists on the season. And the Atlanta Hawks have allowed the last five point guards to average 12 assists. And we're talking about Halliburton. We're talking about Maxi. TJ McConnell got 14 assists on him. He's off the bench with the Pacers. He still had 14. And both the Jones, Tyus Jones, both of them had seven plus assists on this team. So Kyle Lowry, over three and a half assists, I think is a little bit too low. So I'm going to jump on that and the Heat first quarter, Jimmy. Lock it in. You got it. What do you think about the Haslam jersey retirement? What effect does that make uh, playing the game? Uh, it ain't going to make no effect because the Hawks are not a good team. And like I said, Trey Young's taking the night off. He knows that this team owns them. So why put up the effort tonight knowing that they're not going to have a chance to compete? So all the signs point to the Heat taking care of business, you know, so it's going to be a good night for them at home in front of their home fans. DeJonta hit the winning jumper against Orlando. Uh, God, I love him. Uh, 47.1% from the field this year is DeJonta Murray. There's yeah. rumors that they don't like Trey Young. Is, do they ball out without him or no chance? I think so. I think, but I don't think they'll win the game. But I think it'll be more cohesiveness on the team because Trey Young does not pass the ball. He's a ball hawk. Either Trey Young or Deontay Murray is getting traded. One or the other. We don't know specifically which one, but I guarantee you, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, one of those guys is getting traded by the trade deadline. Serious business, Boston first quarter, full time at plus 100 for his look over there in that Celtics. Mm. It's an interesting way of handling it. Uh, serious business. I, 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 getting the big down to even money is um, uh, impressive. LJ Heat, first quarter minus two and a half. Lowry over three and a half assists, minus 122. I mean, we've come to the point in Lowry's career where his assist totals at three and a half. <laughs> right? I'm taking it. <laughs> crazy. In a big game, a divisional game. Hey, I'm taking it. Wild. I'm taking right. it. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're locked in here. LJ on the Heat, first quarter minus two and a half. Lowry over three and a half assists. Let's move on. 8 p.m. Eastern. Phoenix Suns 22 and 18, 10 and 7 on the road at the New Orleans Pelicans 25 and 17, 13 and 8 at home. We're at Smoothie King Center, New Orleans, Louisiana. Both teams 3 and 2 over their past five. Uh, Phoenix playing at the seventh fastest pace, while the Pelicans 22nd fastest pace. Now, it's not that much, really. I mean, it's they're 3.2 possessions apart. Uh, Phoenix at 100.7, uh, New Orleans at 97.5. Uh, both teams shooting the ball very well. Uh, Phoenix 50.3 from the field and 38.3 from three over these last five games. But the Pelicanos, man, 43.9 from three, 51% mm. from the field. Brent Cook, our guy Brent Cook said this is the game that he has been waiting on. Uh, Dave, you know, I, it's not that good in NBA. It was good at one point. I've fallen back off. I um, I need to take this. Uh, but, uh, you know, the black is the black, but I'm not – it's not – I want. I want more. I want more. Uh, so hopefully, and I know working with this crew, I can get there. But let's talk about this spot. Suns, Pelicanos. This is sitting at minus two over here, opening up at minus two and a half, a half point move towards the Phoenix Suns. Interesting. Then from a mm -hmm. total standpoint here, we're sitting here with a 237. Uh, this got up to 239. I mean, judging by the pace, you would never think that teams could – could get to these numbers, you know, when they're playing, when they're combined less than a hundred, you know, possessions each, but the efficiency of these two squads from three is, is the reason why this is in that direction. We talk about where the cash lies, 33% of the tickets and 76% of cash is on the under. Uh, we saw it go up to 239. I guess once it got up to 239, the pros came in and hammered it towards the under. Um, from a spread perspective, you have 64% of the tickets and 93% of the cash on the Pelicans. 64 and 93 on the Pelicans, and yet the books are opening up their arms and giving you an even better line now if you want the Pelicans. That's very, mm -hmm. very, very, very interesting. Both teams are shooting the same from the field. They're both teams have the same record over the past five. Both teams have won eight of their last 11. Suns coming mm -hmm. off their third straight win, 119-117, a home over Sacramento on Tuesday. A Grace and Allen tied the franchise record by making nine threes. That's the second time in six games that Allen – uh, has hit nine threes. Pelicans coming off their second win in three games, 132-112 at home versus the Hornets. They made a franchise record 25 threes uh, in their win over Charlotte on Wednesday. You know, when everything works so smoothly like that, I, I prefer to go against it. Uh, 
you know, if you go two days, so that was on Wednesday. On Monday, uh, they went seven of 23 from three. Uh, but <laughs> it was spectacular last week. And Jordan Hawkins, we're going to hear more and more and more about Jordan Hawkins as the season goes on. 34 against the Mavericks on Saturday. He put up 21 against Charlotte with 6-3. Six, 6 for 9 from three. Hawkins is balling out. Tory Coker, best bet Miami Heat first quarter. Uh, Top set says, am I missing something? I have Pelicans minus four. Justin McKelvey is Suns money line on this card. Top set says, all over the Pelicans here, fading the public. Uh, well, I, I don't, I mean, if you, if you were going to fade the public here, you'd be on the Phoenix Suns. Uh, because only 36% of the tickets are on the Suns and only 7% of the cash is on the Suns if we're to believe these numbers. So fading the public would be backing Phoenix. Uh, take it away here for us, LJ. A fascinating spot, Smoothie King in New Orleans. Yes, it is fascinating, Jimmy. And uh, these teams got history with each other. Uh, Willie Green, the coach of the uh, Pelicans, we do know that he used to be on their coaching staff with the Suns, with Monty Williams. Um he was the defensive mind of that team. And when he left after the finals, the Pelicans scooped him up, hired him as the coach. You notice that the Suns' defense has been lacking ever since that time. So interesting enough to know that it's a reason why they got rid of Monty Williams, because he probably wasn't the brain of that, of that, that team. I think Willie Green was a very contributor to that team. And it shows with the Pelicans, because they play great defense as well, and they can score the ball. So... All that said, Jimmy, I couldn't get to a side. Um, the Suns are 8-5 and five in the last 13 versus the Pelicans, but this is the issue for me. The Pelicans have not seen this version of the Phoenix Suns. You know, they've seen Devin Booker, but see, they're used to playing them with Chris Paul, Mikael Bridges, and Cam Johnson. That was a totally different team now. They have Bradley Beal, and they have Kevin Durant now. So I don't know how the Pelicans can match up. They matched up good versus the Suns before that. It's interesting to see how they're going to match up now because now – the Suns can compete with the length and the athleticism on the perimeter with the Pelicans that got Zion, Brandon Ingram, and, you know, CJ Collin, you know, Herb Jones, you know, even Troy, Troy Murphy coming off the bench. So they got some pieces that can match up with them now is what I'm trying to say. But you just went through the numbers. Both these teams are playing very well as of late. The Suns 5-3 and three straight up in their last eight. Pelicans 6-3 and three straight up in their last nine. The Pelicans are 73 against the spread in the last 10. The Suns are only 3 and 7 against the spread in the last 10. But when Bradley Beal has now came back into that lineup, they've come in on a little win streak now. And since the time that the rumors from Kevin Durant were trying to leave the Suns when they were in this horrible, horrific losing streak, and it was the specific time was when they came to Houston, that first road game that they played Houston. Since that time, the Suns are 8 and 3 in their last 11 games. So I believe the Suns are clicking right now for the most part because they have all three of those players in there and everybody's available to play. Now, first half is where I believe it's going to be interesting. The Suns, 14-8 and eight against the spread in the first half versus the West. 4-2 and two against the spread in the first half on the road versus the West in their last six games. The Pelicans, 13-5-1 against the spread in the first half in their last 19 games. So I don't know who's going to have the momentum in this game in order to set the tone. So I'd rather just sit back and watch because I believe both of these teams will be in contention for the Western Conference. But the fact that the Pelicans haven't seen this version of the Suns is giving me trepidation to stay off. Now, the Suns, they have to play with pace. They have to space the floor because they have trouble in the half court. New Orleans is an excellent half court defensive team. They can throw bodies at you, get into the passing lanes, and create turnovers, which the Suns are prone to do, especially when they go small because they don't have a true ball handler. I know Devin Book is trying to, out there trying to play point guard, but they don't have a true point guard to facilitate the offense. So I believe they're still having trouble with that. And I believe that the Pelicans may take advantage of that tonight if the Suns are sloppy with the ball. But all that said, Jimmy, I am on something in this game. It's just not on the side or total. First off, I'm going to take the New Orleans Pelicans. T total, I believe it's at 120 and a half. I believe somebody can fact check me on that, but I believe it's 120 and a half or 119 and a half, I believe, somewhere around there, because they've hit that number four out of their last six games. 
And I believe they can put money. I, they can put points on the Suns offense because they don't play a lot of defense, you know, and especially when Nurkic goes out of the lineup, they become small. So you can get into the lanes, you know, get layups, you know, points in the paint, things like that. So I believe the Pelicans will have a, you know, not have a rough time doing that today. And I'm also going to take CJ McCollum over three and a half threes uh, because he's hit that seven out of his last 10 games. And he's had four plus three pointers made five straight home games in a row. Now, the Suns don't guard the three-point line. Uh, they're allowing 44% from the three-point line their last three games. The Pelicans are 7-2 and two in their last nine games, shooting 40-plus percent from the three-point line. So that's going to be the termination of this game, ladies and gentlemen. Can the Pelicans stay hot from the three-point line? If that's the case, they're going to blow out the Suns and make the statement. But if they're missing their shots, different story. But all that said, I'm going to take the team total. I believe it's at 119 and a half. And I'm taking CJ McConnell over three and a half, three points. Those some, are my plays. Some very interesting numbers here at the books. CJ McCollum over three and a half threes at Pinnacles plus 137. It's a huge dog line. And Pelican's team total over there is 118 and a half minus 114. So do you want both of those? I want both of them. So this is just exactly what happened yesterday with Jazz Thunder. Whole world was on Jazz. Everybody was on Jazz. Everyone giving out Jazz. And I'm like, well, why is the line not moving? Why are the <laughs> books sitting back watching all of you guys give out the Jazz and bet the Jazz? And, mm -hmm. and now the, the, the hesitation I have to bet the Suns here is just because I was afraid I've been called some my, my colleagues that are my close friends were all on the jazz. And I was, a, I was like, look, do I really want to go up against all these guys? Is that really what mm -hmm. I want to do? And, and then now if I do it here, I, I just, because I didn't do it last night, I'm sure it's going to blow up my face, but I, I don't know how. It may not though. Wow. It may not though, because it's two interesting points. The Pelicans, you know, they haven't seen this version of the Suns, Jimmy. They haven't seen it. So, this does easily be in play. You know, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I love fading a team after a franchise record in threes. It's like one yeah. of my favorite things to possibly do. So uh, I find the Suns. Uh, uh, North Ender says, okay, city. OKC was a much easier read than this game. I think you're right, North Ender, because, you know, OKC had lost twice in L.A., uh, you know, got to be stagnant and maybe party too hard or whatever, didn't play very well, then come on the road, and everybody's talking about the Jazz, so they step up against the Jazz. Joe Yurkovic says the Suns are a public team. Not tonight. Not <laughs> tonight. Uh, Frank says Big Bet just came in from a high-end handicapper, a Pelicans money line. And, um, wow. I um, God, I want to get in the way of this and take the Suns so badly. Okay, so I'm very, very, very interested in the Suns. And Justin McKelvey says, remember I parlayed OKC Moneyline 49's double result? Fuck yeah. Oh, oh man, I love that shit. I love that you did that, Justin. That's That, that payout's going to be uh, <laughs> beautiful. Great, great job. Did get a little sweaty there at the end, but I love it. All right, uh, LJ on Pelicans team total over 118.5. McCollum over 3.5 threes plus 137. I'm very, very interested in the Suns here. Let's move on to the last two spots on the board before we put a bow on this show and have our $100 horse race, 10 p.m. Eastern with the Indiana Pacers, 23 and 17, 10 and 9 on the road at the Portland Trailblazers, 11 and 29, 6 and 12 at home, Motor Center in Portland, Oregon. Watching the Pacers explode yesterday was fascinating. I was very thankful that I wasn't on the Sacramento Kings. It makes me question the Sacramento Kings. But my first thought is, how is Siakam going to come in the following night and make them better just tonight? Yeah. He's talking about tonight. Uh, obviously, he's going to make them better in the long term. But tonight, is he going to make them better uh, after their display last night? Wild. So he's expected to make his uh, debut here. Uh, oh, Frank, it's uh, for our gold members. If you're a gold member, you get a, in a draw. Uh, for fifty dollars every Wednesday and Friday, but I won it yesterday. It's our first week doing it, so I just pushed it over for a hundred bucks today. Uh, let's get into the line history here for this one. We have Portland sitting here at plus five and a half and minus one hundred five. There are fives out there. Uh, this opened at five and it's moved to five and a half. So we have a half point move towards the Pacers from a total side of things. 
We have it sitting at 238 at a pick em. This opened up at 237 and a half, dropped to 237. Now it's back at 238. So we have a half point move. So, uh, you know, a half point move to the favorite, a half point move to the over, very little market movement. When we take a look, we have 80% of the tickets and 85% of the cash on the Pacers. God, I just fucking, the NBA is such a, in the NBA, you have to just like bet these bets that you don't want to make. You know, and that's the only way that I see you. You, you follow the public, you're going to get destroyed. Sixty-eight uh, percent mm-hmm. of tickets, sixty-seven percent of catch on the over, and this is just screaming again, screaming at me to back the Blazers. Siakam making his debut. Pacers on second half of a back-to-back. They snapped their two-game losing streak. Halliburton coming back, still not back. Pacers won without Naismith and Nemhard. Uh, I mean, unbelievable. Matherin was a monster, and TJ McConnell turned back the clock. Blazers snapped their four-game losing streak with a 105-103 win at home over Brooklyn on Wednesday. Uh, do, do you want to back them after any victory? You know, I don't know. But I tell you, I've backed them after bad losses, and you know what's come next? Another bad loss. Uh, Anthony Simons hit that floor. There was 0.2 seconds left. Do they feel good about themselves for once? I mean, they've won twice in the last nine games. Both have come against the Nets. Uh, Simons went for 28 of 20 shooting. Jeremy Grant went for 30 and eight boards. And DeAndre Ayton, uh, 12 game absence. Uh, he's available. He was available on Wednesday, but he can't get out of his neighborhood due to icy roads. I mean, <laughs> good God. I would not be able to coach this guy. I mean, you, can you not plan ahead? <laughs> and, just, and are you the only person in your neighborhood who can't get to work? <laughs> I, I mean, I just like if, if if Aiden said that to me, I'd be like, never come back. Don't walk into this building again. Like I just I couldn't fucking fathom. And of course, he's not there. And what do the Blazers do? They go out and win. They win. Oh, good God. <laughs> Holy fuck. Um, there's our guy Troy Torrance in the house. Great to see you, Tori. Okay, take it away, man. This is a fascinating spot. And I want the pig so badly. Take it away, Blazers Pacers. Don't do it, Jimmy. Don't do it. You you say it all the time. Optional misery. And you're going to have it with Portland. Portland is not a bet on team. And the fact that I'm not even interested in this game is because Indiana's on a back-to-back. And we don't know how Siakam is going to affect that roster. So those two things right there didn't even let me dive into any of these numbers in this game. So... We can pass. If you want to add some more content to this game, that's on you. But I have nothing in this game. I find the Blazers really appealing here. You know, it's just the perfect fade situation when a team plays so well with lack of play. Why was I on the Lakers two nights ago? The simple Mavericks have played so well without Luka. And now they have Luka back. I mean, it's just the easiest cap in sports. Uh, you know, the, the, what I should have done was also – you know, taking Kyrie team point, point to under because what happens mm-hmm. when a guy's putting up 40 a game without the star, the star comes back and, Oh yeah. You score zero points in the first quarter again. I mean, like, uh, um, Justin says he'll probably bet the Blazers go to bed and hope for the best. See, I wish I could do that. Uh, <laughs> leave it. <laughs> you'll be up though. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, Jared Bush, 800 bucks on the Buccaneers upset. I love that. Uh, thinks it is Portland is a bad drug. Man. Uh, see, Justin says he, he bets the Blazers go to bed, hopes for the best. I, I, if I try to go to bed after a bet you like that, no, there's no <laughs> chance. I'm just imagining DeAndre Ayton slipping on ice, you know. All right, uh, Blazers are appealing to me. I will wait, though, I will wait to see what happens here let's move on to the final spot on the board and big show picks anytime anybody talks about fading the lions he appears he's like <laughs> the genie. he's like the genie you just all you have to do is say out loud i think the lions are gonna lose he'll show up in your backyard that's what happened uh, what happened. <laughs> uh bobano showing up or sorry big show showing up here uh and perky says uh one nba uh, i think it's official move farley dickinson lakers both money line well let's talk about the final spot on the board right now. And Justin McKelvey, he started our show with the stacks play today, cashed yesterday. And he started with the Brooklyn Nets plus six and a half. And the first thing I thought of was the Lakers play up and down to the level of their competition. 
So mm-hmm. why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't it? Don't isn't this the type of game that that you're going to need the last second shot from LeBron, and he's going to mm-hmm. break it and it's going to go to overtime? You know. Brooklyn 16 and 24, 6 and 14 on the road. Lakers 21, 21, 15, 7 at home. Crypto.com Arena, Los Angeles, California. Uh, Lakers are the fastest paced team in the NBA right now over the past five games. Uh, 102.5 possessions a game. They're 3 and 2 over that uh, stanza. They're playing well, shooting uh, the ball. 52.1 from the field over those five games, 41.1 from three uh brooklyn not shooting the ball well that comes as no surprise they're playing slowly to 27th fastest in the nba 95.9 possessions game 44.3 percent from the field and 32.1 percent from three coin leaning to the under here mm-hmm. very 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 interesting uh yes cody norton bj did deliver his best bet tonight hornets money line hornets money line uh let's go into the line history here for this one our final spot on the board uh, what a f- I love these Fridays, man. Uh, I always have so much action. It gets me so excited about the evening. We have the Lakers sitting here as seven-point favorites. Seven-point favorites at minus 105. They opened up at minus six now. Please close the door. Open up minus six and a half now at minus seven. Uh, then from a total factor here, we are sitting at uh, 227 and a half. And this opened up at 227. It's now 227 and a half, a half point move towards the over. From a cash flow standpoint, 58% of the tickets and 43% of the cash are on the under. So 42% of tickets and 57 on the over. I got to get the lock back on the door, man. The kids broke the lock down. And um, this is a PA day where I just, I, Ella's friend just come in and ask for a lollipop. Uh, 82% of tickets and 97% of cash on the Lakers. And the line is doing what, I ask you? 82% and 97% of cash on the Lakers. And this opened up at 6.5, and, and it's moved a half point. God, <clears throat> these are just horrific bets that I'm going to have to make. But how in the world do you not think that the that the Lakers will just play down to the level of their competition after that big win over the Mavs? Uh, 58 Oh, we already did that. So let's get into the uh, X's and O's here. Uh, Brooklyn comes in off their four straight loss, 105-103 at the Blazers on Wednesday. Uh, Nets have lost a four straight, nine of their last ten. Since December 14th, they're three wins and 14 losses. Uh, mm-hmm. they, w- they've they lost back-to-back one-possession losses. They lost 96-95 in overtime to the Heat on Monday before they traveled to Portland. Michael Bridges went for 21. Uh, Dinwiddie adds 19. Uh, you know, uh, Lakers come in off their second straight win, 127-110 at home over the Mavericks on Wednesday. They won four of six. The Reeves and Russell are – I'm I, please, please. I, I. Oh, you have to go home? Okay. Have a great day. Okay. <laughs> hey, at least she's polite, Jimmy. She's, she's, she's polite. She's very sweet. She's very sweet. <laughs> I'm just having a, some sort of a phone call with buddies. Uh, victories for the Lakers, uh, Clippers, Thunder, and Mavericks here. In that 127-110 victory over the Mavs, uh, second half, Russell you know, goes for 16 of his 29. Um, you know, James goes for 25-8-8, eight and, eight, and I, just, I just see them playing down to their opposition. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're ready just to roll with this new starting five. Take mm-hmm. it away. Maybe you can illuminate the spot, Nets, Lakers. Yeah, I, I can see the Lakers, you know, making a little run. You know, they're at home. They've been at home for a minute. And they got a Brooklyn team coming in here, like you said, one and nine in the last 10 games. You know I mean, one and nine on the road versus the West. Like you mentioned, they've lost 15 out of the last 19 games. So I would think as a Laker, I believe, hey, we got to play up tonight. It's Friday night. It's in front of our home fans. They've only played one game at home on Friday, and they lost it this year. So I believe they're going to be looking for some redemption because I believe they can beat up on Brooklyn. Now, a seven-point spread? No, I'm not interested in that. But it's two things I am interested in in this game, Jimmy. I'm going to take the first quarter. Lakers, minus two and a half, simply because the Brooklyn Nets are one and nine against the spread in their last 10 games on the road in the first quarter. They do not start off well in the first quarter on the road. At home, completely different. They smash in the first quarter at home. But when they go on the road, completely different team. Mind you, the Lakers are averaging 30 points in the first quarter their last five games, plus five-point margin in the first quarter their last three games. So I believe that they could come out early, 
jump on Brooklyn and sort of coast throughout the game because I don't think Brooklyn could put up enough offensive threat to the Lakers. You know, uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron has been playing well as of late, but I'm not going to take the spread. I'm hoping the Lakers can win the game. I'm not a Laker fan, so I'm not betting on them to win the game. But I am going to bet on the under. I'm going to take the under 227 just because Brooklyn is 7-2 to the under the last nine games. They haven't been shooting the ball as of late very well. There are a couple games they've scored, what, under 100, three out of the last five, I do believe. You know, that Portland game went in overtime, so that's, a, you know, an outlier. But other than that, I don't believe they could score enough. I don't think they could get to 110 points, in my opinion. And the Lakers, they usually, when they win, they go under as well, especially at home, because they're four and two to the under their last six games. So I'm trusting that they play a little bit of defense tonight, keep the Brooklyn under their points, and the Lakers cruise to a victory. But not interested in the seven, but I will take them in the first quarter and the under 227. Uh, we can get you the 228 on that total at Bavada. On the first quarter, would you like the minus two at minus 113 or minus two and a half at minus 103? I'll take the two. I'll take the two. Minus 113. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, of, I've got to take. I've got to, you know, um, Kelly tells me to leave the lipstick on the table, but I'm, I'm putting it all over this pig here. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm not even looking to. I'm just going to wipe all of it. It's going to be more clown than, more clown than sexy for the Brooklyn Nets. I, I got to, I got to just stick with this. Plan. You know, I, over the last couple of years, I don't mean to like, but I've had this read on the Lakers that's my best ROI of any team in the league. And I'm not saying that it's going to work here, but I was mm -hmm. so confident in them against the Mavs. I waited patiently. I knew the line. Everything would be announced. Joker, uh, that uh, Luca would be in. It went from four to two. Hammer it. And now uh, I just, after the Nets losing these heartbreaking games, I just feel like they'll play at the best of their abilities and it won't be that easy. Now, maybe I'm completely wrong and how I would be wrong is this starting five is legit. They are a mm -hmm. 21 and 21 basketball team that's going to, you know, fire away. But I'm with uh, Justin McKelvey here on the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, and mm. I'm gonna wait. I'm going to wait again. Um, this is not a move that I make I bet right after this show. So that means that the Blazers and nets would be bets that I would make 20 minutes before tip off at this point. So that, that is my plan for both of those spots. And I knew when Justin put it in the chat, I was like, oh, God, cause it's already what my cap was taking me to. So those are the late game spots here. We have LJ on Pelicans team total over team total over one eighteen and a half, and McCollum over three and a half threes at plus one thirty seven. The sun's, appeal to me at this point with everything all the money on the pelicans i expect to move on the suns that's going to be another spot that i kind of want to wait and see then we have a smoking tree giving us heat minus six and a half lj on the heat first quarter minus two and a half and lowry over three and a half assists at minus 122 i can't quite comprehend uh or i'm not sure what to do with this whole jersey retirement <laughs> because you would think when the superstars come back and they're in the arena for that, that there might be a little more uh, accountability and attentiveness, even if they start slower. I, that might keep me mm -hmm. off of, of the Hawks because I'm under this assumption that they don't like playing with Trey. And mm -hmm. maybe when he's off the floor, they start rolling, uh, you know? Um, ah. Okay, Trill OG play of the day, Celtics first half minus three and a half, and the team total over 120 and a half. And, you know, I guess, ah, oh God, I don't know. I, I'll have to sit with that a little more. LJ's on Embiid over 33 and a half assists, 18 straight games with at least 30. Then I like unders in these first two games. So if I'm saying that LaMelo is going to control the play, the pace with the Hornets at home, then the Hornets will control the pace, the 24 fastest pace with all this poor shooting, then why wouldn't I want the under? And then I'm un I'm interested in this under in the Sixers magic as well. I've been trying to cut totals completely out of my action. And I haven't bet one all week, so why not fire a couple here? Mm -hmm. That is our NBA breakdown. Uh, last Friday, LJ went 7-0 on sides and totals and looking to get that once more. LJ, I love rocking with you. 
of my man. Yes, sir. Go out there and get that cash. Go out there and get that cash. Also, we are expanding our uh, pub hubs because the amount of picks of uh, needed are down. So I'll be in touch with you if you're going to be available tomorrow. We'd love to have you on NFL pub hub. Uh, mm-hmm. And that is our NBA breakdown here. We're about to do the horse racing here. LJ, thank you for taking the time to work with us and share all your hard work. Uh, thank you, my man. Please follow LJ on, on X at LJ sports media, and please support the raw words podcast. What's going on with raw words right now? Let, let the people know. Uh, nothing as of late, you know, I've been slacking. I admit, uh, social content is not a part, but hey, it is what it is. I've been capping. I've been doing a lot of work, but we are still getting to the money. So believe me or not, it's still being productive. But other than that, man, I just enjoy this time with you, Jimmy. I love capping on Fridays with you. My job watches my, you know, they watch my show as well, cheer me on as well. So they love mm-hmm. the fact that I do this, <laughs> you know, make the money as well, you know, so they love it, man. So yeah, having a good time. Looking forward to y'all hanging out, San Antonio couple months in March, you know, getting ready for that. And uh, like you said, another big game for the Texans this weekend. So let's see how we match up against these Ravens. So we'll see what happens. But I am definitely available for you tomorrow if you need me on the pub. I can talk that game. That's the first game. So let's do it. So other than that, appreciate you, Jimmy. And always say let's cash. And I'll see you next Friday. Respect, my man. There he is, LJ from H Town again, seven and zero on sides and totals last week. It is time now. <laughs> wow, I think that was a horse sound, but it sounded more like a witch. I think that was like the Wicked Witch of the West uh, in a horse outfit. Do you want to give that to us again? Ooh. Want to try that again? All right, hold on. Let me get back in the character. Go ahead. Yeah, that was that was that was. Uh, that was not your best performance as a horse. That sounded very much like Halloween. Let's try it again. <laughs> oh, God. He's falling apart back there. This guy. I guess so. The horses are not coming out today. Oh, man. That was... That was, that was Jesus, man. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Somebody's on mushrooms uh, on this fine, fine All right. So we have made this race two and a half minutes. What? So we had a two minute race yesterday. We were going to be three minutes. What led you to this two and a half minute call? I don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> I just thought maybe three minutes would be uh, a little long, long here. Too, too, too a little short. long. Who knows? Again, one of these races will be the entire length of the show. I, I'm just going to make it three hours, and I'll like know that. by around then it'll be Can we done, just keep so. flashing back? Let's do that next Wednesday. Yeah. Let's do that. We'll keep flashing back to the race uh, yeah, you know, so every, like, 30 minutes and see where it stands. I love yes, it. Yes, we must sign up. That's we great. We must sign up. That's great. Uh, B- Big Show thinks two minutes is too long. Uh, oh, yeah, it probably is. But, you know, I like watching the horses run. I like the long race, too, man. Yeah. I like long race, too. All right, $100 up for grabs. Every horse in front of you, those are gold members here at Pub Sports Radio. We'll be doing this every Wednesday and Friday moving forward. But we did it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week. I won our inaugural, and it's back in the pot. So there's $100 for one Gold member, uh, Jose, please give us one more horse sound and start the race. Yes, of course. Frank, that's a great question. Does AI determine the winner? No, Frank. The fastest horse does. And it's... <laughs> Come on, Frank. We're watching the ponies race. Who would bet on fake horses? Who would do that? It's the fastest <laughs> horse, Frank. We're racing in San Antonio. Here we go. Oh, boy. My favorite part is the music. I enjoy the music very much. I don't. Subhuman Gaucho has taken the early lead. Director 97 on his outside. And here comes Billy Friedrich. Billy Friedrich wanting Mac that wants catch. Here as oh, well. there's C-Mac. C-Mac oh. is pushed into the lead here. Well, we, watched, we watched Jimmy last time come from behind the last 10 seconds. We need to watch Jimmy's horse come again. From nowhere, here. You're right. uh, come oh. from nowhere. It's a tight one. Chris Boggan. Uh, Chris Boggan was our Wheel of Glory winner uh, okay. two days ago. So there. But Nasty Nate. Here Nasty comes Nate Nasty wants Nate. Some action. Wow. Oh, look at Jose. Jose's got a piece. I do know I'm not winning this. My my horse ain't like this. Wow. Jose's looking strong here. And here comes Big Show, who says two minutes is too long. Big Show wants this race to end right now. (laughs) 
Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Big Show firing out into the front there. God, Big Show looks good in pink. Yeah, I think it's a great looking horse. Here comes Ricky. Ricky's come so close these last two times. I just gotta, I gotta scream Ricky at the top of my lungs every time I see Joey uh, Ricky. Joey saying Dabby's a rat as well. We got some rats in here as well. Oh, Frank says that Crystal Craig is creeping. Where is Crystal? Crystal Craig was creeping. Now she's falling behind. Look, okay. we've got a minute left in this race. The pack is bunching up. Here comes again. Justin. Justin. Justin making a huge move. Justin. Justin trying to Justin and Nasty Nate here with 45 seconds. Who's that on the end? Look at Nut Flush. Nut Flush on the inside. Get in there, horse. Look at Nut Flush. Blood, you son of a bitch. And Dabby Cab making a move on the outside. Look at Dabby Cab gobbling up ground with every step. And here comes the Edge Gamer and Jeff Slaughter. <laughs> the best would be if Jeff Slaughter would win. That means 150 bucks would be on the next one. Oh, Jeff Slaughter boy. trying to Oh, it. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff is coming on with it. Oh, Jeff. no, he buckles. He buckles late. He oh, buckles no. late. Oh, who's that on the inside? Crystal Craig. No. Crystal Craig no. making a huge no. run director. No. No. And he should have been flying. He should have been oh, flying. No. But he is director 97. Woo. $100 richer. Director Woo. 97. God, that was exciting. So what were the final? Let's get leave that up. Final outcomes here. We had uh, Director 97 in first, Ian Shaber uh, completing the exacta, and then completing the trifecta, Billy Friedrich. Uh, Subhuman Gaucho fourth, Saturated fifth, Joe T sixth, Crystal Craig seventh, Randall Sheffield eighth, C-Mac ninth, Big Show tenth. Uh, where, what happened to our friend uh, Jeff Slaughter? He was in business. Uh, Jimmy the Bag did not perform. And not Flush Allen last. Die. Die. Look at that. Not Flush Allen. What a wow! That was a wild one. That was extremely exciting. Yeah, you know, I I think we have to blame the jockey that time for Ian. Man, his horse had plenty of a uh, horse, but yeah, just late kick, late kick. Oh, but we also got to blame the jockey on slaughters. I mean, just pushing way too early. I mean, what's the come on? Save a little in the tank, man. Yeah, murdered that horse dead before that fucking race ended. Jesus. Save a little in the tank. All right. Uh, Billy Freeze said he would have won if Nasty Nate didn't bump him. So there's a claim of foul. A claim of foul here for Nasty Nate. We'll, well have to wait for that here's the best part about these horse races that anything goes in our horse races. We, we oh, really? There's no inquiry. You can bump, well, you know, rubbing is racing, as they say. The dapper capper says a bouquet with a middling finish as per usual. That is accurate. That is that is that is uh un unastoundingly accurate right there, Joey Marinaccio. So shout out to you, shout out to Dapper Capper. Uh, Al yes. Servic says, What's this? I've been out for a week and I'm missing on the racing. Yes, you are. Director 97, now a hundred dollars winner. And the question was posed, uh, you know, who decides this? How how do you uh, you know and it's the fastest horse? Yeah. Come on. Well, Director 97 had the fastest horse, so he gets the money. Director, of course, DM us on Twitter or email at pubsportsradio at gmail.com. So. Not, not Flush was into it. He was slapping his own ass like Mr. Gokester. And if those of you want to see Mr. Gokester slap his own ass in person during a horse race, you come to San Antonio on the yes. Sunday. Yes, that's arguably my favorite part of the weekend. That was really fun. It was really fun uh, last week. We were, we're just all so hungover. Oh, you know, yeah. Like, we all. Oh, uh, Pete walking around trying to feed people. Like, we're all just slumped over. Yeah, well, Pete's Pete's going to have his uh, hands busy with someone else. He's going to be feeding someone else that trip, apparently. Oh, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, we're going to put video cameras everywhere so we can keep an eye on it. Uh, and uh, Al Servic says, what are the guidelines? How do I get across the wire? All you have to do is be a gold member. We have a new gold membership every Wednesday and Friday. We are closing our shows with these huge horse races. And uh, they're still running, these horses. You know? Um, yeah. 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 Very impressive. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. It's a beautiful thing, these horse races. Now, I, I will admit the horses are fun, but there are other other ways. There are duck races as well, you know? No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, fuck that. It's horses from now on. It's never changing. This is the most fun that we get to have <laughs> all week. I need this, and we need to keep track of our winners. See how many winners we have. Uh, so, uh, yeah, well, Chris, Chris, unfortunately, you won the fake 
opening. You know, you feel good about a wheel, Chris? No, he doesn't. Ooh, but what, a, what a great guy! He he wants to put that into the to the a bar tab. Oh, well, but Chris, bar tab for the squad. Mind, you are a good guy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, yes, yes, Chris. And then yesterday it was you, obviously, winning the first one in our guide direct to ninety seven. I love it. Uh, oh, Nash Nate just dropped this horse off at the weave shop. So we're gonna, we got yeah, best dressed will be next for sure. 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 Uh, Nuffleish Han says he's the only guy yelling at the PGA event, and yeah, he's uh, he's watching golf right now, screaming for his horse. <laughs> just slapping his own ass. Just slapping his own. I get it. I get it. Al Cervic, it's twice a week, Wednesdays and Fridays. All you have to do is be a Pub Sports Radio Gold member, ten ninety nine a month. Uh, you'll see it uh, in like perks, I believe. You'll sign up. Now Flush signed up, I believe, on his phone since he's at the PJ event. Uh, so it's very easy. Uh, it's very nice. And yeah, it's you know it it will be a little funny uh, at one point when we get to like a hundred members and there's a hundred horses on the track. Oh, <laughs> <gosh, yeah. laughs> that will be electric. My life's been waiting for this. I've come full circle. Because I told you guys that, that Montreal Casino hammering those pretend horses running around in a circle like an ass clown. Yeah, That's now here we are. I love it. I love it. Uh, $100 for Director 97. You know, this is going to be great bet. for Pubba Palooza, Jim. We didn't realize. We might have to bet on these horses during Pubba Palooza. Just start running the races, put $25 to your horse to win, throw in a pot. I'd hate to gamble on horses at Pubba Palooza, too. It would be a shame. Put it on one of the TVs. You well, picture it now. We we got NBA Jam on one of the TVs. I was uh, I got in a little jam yesterday. Uh, I'm playing really well right now. I'm I'm just playing at the best of my abilities. I'm just seeing the floor real nice, real clean. Sure. I'm just uh, defending properly. I'm not panicking on the perimeter. I'm just I'm ready for anybody who wants hey, we've it. We've seen your ping pong skills. Hundred. Well, not really. I that was like that was the. I mean, I hadn't eaten all day. I was just you know a, sh a shaky mess. Yeah. Uh, so again, hungover. just a reminder. Yeah. The only guy that backed you on that, this fucking guy right here. No, I respect that. I respect oh, that. I respect that. Uh, Al Cervix says Jimmy's NBA Jam team analysis is unrivaled. I have read essays. There was essays uh, online sure. that I read, like full essays. Uh, really impressive work. I've read it Great all. Great literature. Teams. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Uh, and uh, Big Show is right for um, our huge UFC contest. Uh, please sign up. That is free. Uh, that is, and we have a huge fight night tomorrow night. A uh, big show, a big part of our UFC community, of course. And we have a huge contest every week for UFC, free to enter, hundred bucks to the winter winner. And there's also now, uh, they're following your stats throughout the season, so there's prizes for uh, all levels here. So uh, you got to uh, join us here. Yeah, in our yeah. you sign up. You'll see the weekly UFC. You got a lovely wow. video. Was that there Billy slapping well. his own ass? Can you go back? <laughs> I, I'm almost certain that he slapped his own ass in that shot. Well, hold on. Yeah, you're right. I guess I do have to go back. Let's uh, go back. That, that's crucial here. Was he? I believe. <laughs> yeah, hold was... on. I have to find a way to sign out. Uh, okay. But yes, uh, obviously, go to the UFC. You'll sign up. You'll see all the things, and you scroll down. You get to pick one of each thing. You know, you think this guy's going to win knockout in the second round, blah, blah, blah. And you go through that. You get points. It's a good time, and uh, winners do get cashed out. So shout out to everyone that it's in there. Only one question in my head right now. Uh, was, yes, it, was Billy slapping his own ass in let's that shot? Because uh, I thought that was just a gokster thing. Now, they are similar age, so maybe it's just you know guys in their 20s get excited, clap their own ass. I. I never did when I was 20 uh, myself. But, Jose, you're in your 20s. Do you slap your own ass when you get excited? Uh, no, I don't. But uh, you were you had a very interesting uh, 20s. You know, I, I actually uh, told Helga, I regaled her the story of your uh, just – he didn't want to pay taxes for half your life. Yeah, I was – Yeah, she was like, what do you mean he didn't pay taxes? Like, yeah, he just, you know, they pay him. Oh, uh, good. Uh, she she was she laughed. How's it going? Oh, that's great. That's great that uh, my bank account getting shut down by the Canadian government brought a lot of joy and laughter to your lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and it, it looks like Billy's gonna uh, luck out this week. I can't get that, the video up here. Maybe in the time you're shutting the show down, going over the picks, I'll find it. But uh, I need to see that again as well. 
Well, I need to see whether or not this was factual because I thought I looked up and I saw <laughs> Billy Brisbane slapping his own ass. Can we get? Can we I see mean, one? Can we see? It one was more shocking. Time? It was shocking. I know Swigs has that video somewhere. Swigs, you can send me that video before the end of the show. We'll play it again. Ian says I saw it correct. I mean, this is because we do have tape of Gokster slapping his own ass. So I mean, it's just important information, uh, you know, because we trust the man implicitly with his angles and if he's also slapping his own ass maybe we don't next time maybe we fade you know that's facts yeah i get it let's review all action here and we are selling crop tops right the uh, billy brisbane crop tops at public palooza uh you you cut them yourself though you know we don't it, it's very hard to determine the length of your crop top so we'll give you the shirt and you just cut it yourself i will cut it while you wear it that's the new deal. Work too. That's the yes. new deal with the machete while you wear it. All right, let's review all at the Briz Top. I like that. Uh, sure. Perky says, does anyone know how far the Hotel Emma is from a bar in San Antonio? Is Emma a hooker? Uh, I'll tell you, Perky, in the next, uh, like, 10 minutes. Oh, so there is a hotel. I mean, that's just not some... Uh, no, no, no. That is, no that's, yeah, yes, yes. She's not a hooker. She's a nice lady. Oh, Emma. You know Emma. Uh, I've never met, had the pleasure of meeting her, but she seems like a lovely lady. I'm sure she's just a ghost. It's an 11, uh, 11 minute uh, drive, Perky, and it's not walkable. Yeah, that's not a good. Uh, you, you, you get an Airbnb right close, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. um, all right, exactly. let's review all action here. Clint started the Die Hard MMA podcast. He got us going with his. Uh, action here. I'm going to pop it in the chat. This is for UFC 297. Maybe it'll help you in your free contest picks. In NHL, I'm on the Panthers minus one. Bobano's on the Panthers team total over three and a half. Sammy Reinhardt goal at plus 122. Bobano's on the over six and a half in Detroit, Carolina. That's the only game I'm not on. Uh, I'm on the Blue Jackets plus 140. Bobano joined me at plus 136. That was an addition for him. He's also on the over six and a half and the draw plus 390. I'm on the under six and the Islanders puck line. And I do believe that the Islanders puck line is the best bet on the board. A Bobano is also on the under six. That's the first Bobano under that he's given out since on the show, since I tracked him, his unders two years ago and he abandoned them. I think that oh, he should I, be I'm on that under two actually as well. It just should be better every game. It should just be yeah, better. Every under six minus 125 for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's just 10 cents worse than I got. So I like it. Um, uh, nice and perky bump saying that he's going to be drinking his own urine possibly this evening. So a lot of excitement. Well, fairly Dickinson in, in Los Angeles better win. Uh, the taint play of the day from uh our friend Maddie Ice uh is in. <laughs> and it's those Quinnipiac Bobcats. Now we give it out of four and a half. It's moved to six. Uh. Hoyas plus 12 and a half for Bobano and the over 148 and a half. I'm joining him on the Hoyas. St. Louis plus eight and a half for Bobano. I'm joining him on that. He's on the over 148 in Quinnipiac, Siena. He's on Niagara. No, I am going to. So he's on Niagara plus three and a half. I'm rolling with him on that. He's also on the over 144. He is on Maris plus three and a half. We're going heads up on that one. I am on Mount St. Mary's. He's also on the over 132 and a half. And Joe T is also on that over. Bobano's on the over 134 and a half in, in the Peacock Stags game. Uh, Jay Smooth, Smooth Balls play of the day is also on that over 135 and a half. Oh, Joe T is also on that as well. Joe T also on the Akron Kent State over 143. Bobano's on Canisius plus eight and a half in the over 144 and a half. I'm going to be on the Lemoyne Dolphins. Uh, Robert Martin came in and just told me how bad they were. And generally, when, when I'm on a bet and someone tells me how bad that team is, my ROI skyrockets. Uh, but don't just do that. You have to feel it. Don't just do that now because I've told you guys that. Uh, Lemoyne, but I can't. I'm not sure if I'm going to go first half or full game, but I'm going to be on them. Bobano on the over 123 and a half in Wagner, Merrimack. He's on the over 144 and a half in Long Island, St. Francis. Uh, we stayed off Toledo, Central Michigan. He's on Akron plus one and a half in the over 141 and a half. Indiana and UNLV. Well, UNLV is going to be on my card. Everybody Online. and their mama on Colorado State. You like that too? I bet it already, yeah. Everybody and their mama on Colorado State. All we got were Colorado State looks in the chat. And the lines moved a half point towards UNLV. I'll take plus seven. Yeah, I'll take. I'll be on the bed and plus seven too. Indiana, I'm interested in as well. Uh, bounce back after that Purdue loss, embarrassment. I, I'm interested. I'm gonna spend a little more time on that. And then we've already discussed all of our 
action here uh, in NBA. So do we have a clip, Jose? Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. We look at this. I'm going to big screen this. Oh, he's sl- – well, is that leg or – I can't even – what is he exactly slapping? I don't know. I, think, I, I'll, I might give him the benefit of the doubt and say that's mid-thigh, but I like imagining him slapping The first slap ass. is ass. I think he moves it. The first, Let's see it one more time. The first slap is ass, I think, and then he sort of moves up the thigh. Whatever gets him going. I respect Billy. I, of you course. Know, you know, I get it. Who doesn't you- slap their ass when they watch horses or UFC? I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. But thank you all for your support here. DC Capper with his action. He's doubling up on the Detroit Lions. I'm still praying that we see a six or a five and a half to give me the green light on the Buccaneers. I won't move on at six and a half, but I'm praying for the green light. I have moved on the first half over in the full game over in that game. Toledo minus seven and a half. Colorado State minus seven. Also for DC. Perky, go get that cash. You got a huge day in front of you. Billy Friedrich, liquor store. Ian Shaber. Great to see all of you guys. Al Cervic, thank you for rolling with us. Swiggy, great job on the confidence pool. Remember, your picks have to be in by midnight. Justin McKelvey says Brizzy was definitely smacking his own ass. Uh, Thank you for the verification there. That's important. It's important. Do you have your confidence picks in? Uh, No, I don't. Do you? Yeah. I know exactly what I'm doing, though. Oh, Jimmy, I, I was the one. I was like, Sean, we need this open. And I need to. I, I had to put them in first because I am not fucking this one up. I am mm-hmm. not fucking this one up. I feel like I have a great chance to win some money here, Jimmy. Why? What are your chance. losers? My losers. Yeah. What are they? They're not many. I, I obviously had the Cowboys at seven and Cleveland at three. I, I'm still rocking and rolling. I'm yeah, you're right because you only had the Cowboys at seven. Yeah. So yeah, you do have a chance to win this. Can you go down and see? Can we go down to the top? Performance sure, here? Of course, of course. And we can see the leaderboard there. Uh, I'm very much still in this, and I believe in myself and my abilities here. You can see the lovely leaderboard there. You can see our friends Die Hard MMA and Dr. Saucy, Slaughter, Peach, Nut Flush down there as well. But if you scroll to the top, Uncle Jay. Winners are you'll find where the Our guy are. Uncle Jonathan. I love yeah, it. So yeah, you you were lucky to only have Dallas seven. I Dallas is a nine, so that gives me a tiny chance. But you have a chance with Dallas seven because there are a lot of people had them in double digits. Yeah, and the San Francisco 49ers are my thirteen bomb, and the Ravens are my eleven bomb this week. So uh, I already when... cashed my thirteen. Nine is going to be my twelve. Bills? That was the Bills, yeah. Yeah, I, I made them high. I think they were my 12. But, yeah, no, I was waiting for this uh, Niners game. We all know how Preston feels about Niners-Packers, and I, I hear him wail about how the, the Niners own the Packers. So uh, I will be a, a big Niners guy with everyone else. And I'm a little worried about the Ravens. I only have the Niners or, or the, the Lions of the six. I've been going back and forth on that game, actually. I'm excited. I'm really excited. It's a fun, fun pool. And our we're going to have two. We're going to have the college – uh, the March Madness bracket. We're also going to have the March Madness uh, confidence pool. And it's so much fun. You get a hundred points. A number one seed costs you 16. 16 seed costs you one. You get a hundred points to work with. Build your group of teams. And yeah, then you get I don't it. even, I don't even know how to begin to do that in my head, but I can't wait. Do you remember who won last year's March Madness bracket? Uh, was that uh, Matty Ice? Matty Ice. Yeah. yeah he's, he's very talented. Very talented individual. He'll be with us at Pub Sports Radio. Uh, DC, Ka- or oh, sorry, at uh, Pub Palooza. Uh, DC Capper, I think the best bet on the NHL board, the best bet is the New York Islanders on the puck line. And I'm not a real, I'm not, don't hammer puck lines that much anymore. All right. Uh, that is our show for today. We put in some good hustle, hey? Eh? Almost four hours. Uh, Jose, can you bless our action, my friend? Bless our action and send us into the future. Sure, it's going to be fun, fun uh, next couple of months. Like we keep saying, Pubba Palooza in March. Uh, I got a text at 7 in the morning uh, this morning about a brunch uh, for Pubba Palooza. I can't wait. Full transparency. I don't have the number saved of whoever sent that text message to me. So if you're watching, I didn't want to feel like a dick and ask who this was. But if you want to send me your name, I'd appreciate that. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, the the Spurs game against the Suns 
where I will almost guarantee everyone Jimmy will not be at that game just based on uh, past uh, watchings of Pablo Palooza. Well, Jimmy, you know, you know what? There's there's new news on this, Jose. Ooh. We might be getting a box. Our own we're, box. We're, we're all gonna jump in Jeff's box. Yeah, so that would change things. As I'd I would like to be in that, Jeff's that, box. That, that experience. Well, don't say it quite like that. But what? It just sounds a little. I mean, Jeff's got a nice box. All right, let's put a bow on this. Let's put a bow on this. One. Okay, I mean, if we do get that box, it'd be great. If we could just pile in as many people as we can in Jeff's box, that would be awesome. But I still, uh, I, I still would be shocked to see Jimmy the Bag at the oh the Frost Bank Center actually as well. Yeah, Frost so, Bank. Yeah, Frost yeah. Shout Bank. to them. But it's gonna be fun. Appreciate it, everyone. Shout out to you guys, Swiggy. Thanks for all your work, Justin. McKelvey. By the way, Justin, when baseball starts, I'm strictly calling you Justin McElvey. I'm just going to let you know that now it's a Rocco Rogers situation with you there, Justin. Sure. I love you, buddy. Sure. DC Capper, all you guys remember, you saw those horses run. Next time they're running, Wednesday. Wednesday, we ride again. All you have to do is become a member of this channel and go to that gold tier because we appreciate you guys. Get your memberships Get your discounts. Look right coming to Pablo Palooza. If you don't come to Pablo Palooza with at least one Pub Sports Radio shirt, I will be offended only a little bit there. But let's check. Hey, those bookmakers, let's go.